a lot of people just assume those guys who say I'm pro-life vote for me are trying to abolish abortion. Behind the scenes, don't you dare let that bill to abolish abortion as murder land on my desk. Abortion. It's like this constant mass murder of the most innocent people on the planet. But all that murder happens because all of these Christians actually don't love their neighbors as themselves. They love themselves supremely. We all need to do things that we're going to lose our jobs for, things that we're going to get persecuted for. There's no real persecution going on because there's not a lot of really salty, bright Christianity going on. And they won't stand up for innocent, preborn human beings that are being butchered. They're not really going to stand up for anything. If you could get 100,000 people to go do the work of an abolitionist, the world starts to change. Welcome back to the Defenders and Disciples podcast. In this episode, I'm joined by T. Russell Hunter from Abolitionist Rising. Russell holds a BA in philosophy and a master's in history of science from the University of Oklahoma. During his pursuit of a doctorate degree, Russell stumbled across the historical significance of the abolition movement, specifically how it intersects with Darwinism during the 19th century. Since then, Russell has sparked the resurgence of the abolition movement as it pertains to the current crisis of abortion. Russell is much more than a student of these topics. He actively lives out his convictions, often at great personal cost and sacrifice. He subscribes to the principle that moral opinions must not remain opinions, but also must drive us to action. And for the last 13 years, Russell has been a key player in the abortion abolitionist movement. His work at Free the States and as the first abortion abolitionist lobbyist had a huge impact by raising awareness and helping in the proliferation of abolitionist bills in states across the U.S. Russell has recently turned his attention to Abolitionist Rising, which is a nonprofit organization that seeks to advance the message of abolition through cultural engagement and the equipping of other abolition organizations, churches, and individuals. During our conversation, Russell explained the difference between the pro-life movement and the abolitionist movement, the equivocating tactics used by supposed pro-life politicians to avoid avoid abolishing abortion, how you can get involved in the fight to abolish abortion, and so much more. And now I give you T. Russell Hunter. Hey, Russell, welcome to the show. How are you doing today, sir? Excellent. Excellent and happy to be here. So can you share a cool or interesting God story that happened to you or someone else that just like a really amazing situation where you're like, wow, that was definitely God at work there? Yeah, I mean, I... What's what's interesting is like when I saw that question in the email, I'm like, yeah, there, there's this range of like these stories that like you tell them and people are like, nah, that's, uh-huh. that's not true. And those are really impactful, you know, but sometimes they're personal and people wouldn't believe them. But uh, the one that came to my mind so quickly uh, when I when I looked at this and it's not something I haven't thought about in a long time, um, but just the question, cool God story popped into my brain, um, a memory of my, uh, sophomore year living in the dorms at the college where I go most frequently to, mm-hmm. to minister or to just engage people about abortion and all that. Um, I was out there just the other day and I, and I met some guys and I was like, yeah, I used to live They were like, they're always like, you don't belong here. Go home, you know, get off of our college campus. Like I'm traveling around. I'm like, well, you want me to go home? Cause I live like half a mile that way, <laughs> you know, you want me to get out of Norman. Um, they're like, well, this isn't your college campus. And I'm always like, well, I went to this college for like 10 years. How long have you been here? You know, <laughs> but, uh, and they're like, shut up, you know, and they, they just think I'm just lying. I'm like, yeah, I lived on Walker 11 and I, and I hadn't thought about it till just the other day. And then it was the same time I looked at your, your prompt. And I, I, I was reminded that I had a, a roommate in, in, college my sophomore year that I just had put in my room just he was just put in my room and uh, it was about the time that I was getting really serious about following Christ and was getting really into apologetics and Mm -hmm. I was just kind of like that caged age Christian where it's like I want to like find an atheist and debate him (laughs) yeah and I'm like moving into this dorm and I'm like who's going to be assigned and like in walks this Marilyn Manson looking dude (laughs) with the, with the tats and stuff all over his face. And the, and, and he walks in and, and he's like as evangelical atheist as I am evangelical Christian. Oh my gosh. And, and, and he walks in and I'm just like, wow, thank you, Lord. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. 
and uh and of course i drove him nuts for like the first semester of the of the school uh yeah the first semester and uh and uh, it was so awesome to rem- be reminded of this the other day because because this young man uh i just you know just debating him all the time about everything and anything yeah. you know he's doing atheist apologetics and i'm doing christian apologetics and we're just going back and forth about everything and uh and it got to the point where um i basically went there's a there's a philosopher theologian named francis schaefer who said you know uh-huh. who kind of said you can boil people down to like it's it's following christ <laughs> or suicide he says but this is a really dangerous thing to tell these people because they're they're lost and they don't have any hope and you don't want to drive anyone to suicide mm-hmm. and uh but anyway, before I got to that part of the book, <laughs> I just read the the philosophical part, and and this young man, his name is Scott, and he uh he he was debating me like the day before we left for Christmas break, and we just debated all night long, and I basically told him that I was like, it's it's either following like your worldview, your reason, yeah. you're just shifting sand, you have no foundation for anything. You believed um, there's there's you're just stardust and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I pushed him to that point of uh, suicide or Christ. And uh, he actually went home over Christmas break and got himself drunk, silly, uh, got into a bed, uh, got a got a firearm. He was already drunk, probably taking pills and sat there, almost killed himself, but then like remembered christ or suicide and he chose christ and he came back after christmas and he was like kind of because he moved out he moved he he moved out of the dorm room okay and he 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 moves out he hates me and he's mad he goes home and he does this and he comes back and he's like hey man i moved out of the room i can't move back into the room but i'm following christ now i was just like wow so all i had to do was like push this guy to to suicide (laughs) You're like and so, and and so it was like all this work and all this and the reason yeah. I think it was such a cool thing that I that I was reminded of the other day is that all this work and all this pushing that I did, um, really it all got down to, yeah he had to he had to be sitting there in that room I'm not there mm-hmm. I'm not arguing and he told me it wasn't your arguments, he's like <laughs> you know because I was kind of a young prideful man he's like it wasn't sure. your arguments, I was just laying in the bed, and I was either going to kill myself or follow Christ and Christ did something, and I was like. Well, praise God, you yeah. know. And so, so the other day, I, when I looked up at that room the other day, I was like, "Yeah, that was such a that was such a cool thing that God did." And that was like very early on. That was like one of the that was like one of the first people that I saw come to Christ. So, that is an yeah. amazing story. Yeah, wow. it was it was it was a fun it was a fun time, you know. And so, yeah. I, I hope he's doing well. I hope I hope he watches your channel and he sees this. Yeah, because I think he's moved off. He lives somewhere else now. Um. Was that the same university where they were trying to move you like fifteen feet to the to the free free speech oh, yeah. place? Yeah, the, to move me from the free speech zone that is America to the free speech zone. No, that's that was uh, that was like in Wichita. That was oh, okay. that was uh, in uh, Kansas. You know, the, the the great liberal bastion of Kansas. That's where that was. But no, University of Oklahoma. Like most of the videos that we do. Mm. Um, are either at the University of Oklahoma or Oklahoma State University, um, but yeah, we do it so frequently that they don't even try to move us. They're just kind of like, "Oh, these people, yeah, know know the law, yeah. know they're allowed to do what they're doing." We could call the cops, but the cops just come out here and say, "No, they're 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 within their rights." And actually, the it. cops in Norman are kind of like, "We know these people are peaceful, and all you're yeah. going to do is lie about them." I'm sure, they also agree with a lot of your message too. Yeah. Sometimes yeah, sometimes they're like, I can't. But then you'll get a cop that's like, I'm on your side. Yeah. And you're like, oh, good. <laughs> get a, occasionally get a bad cop, but you know. Well, speaking of uh free speech and things like that, it kind of rolls into the next icebreaker question. What do you think is the biggest threat to our nation? If you ever find yourself in a situation where you have to use deadly force to defend yourself or to defend someone else, then you're going to want a good legal team defending you after the fact. And that's why I trust attorneys on retainer. And if you want to see how AOR compares to those other CCW insurance providers, then scan this QR code or check out my affiliate link in the description. They have individual and family plans so that you will be legally protected should you ever need to protect your life or someone else's life. And don't forget to use promo code DAD to save $25 on your initial signup. 
Ooh, yeah, that's that's like the best question on this whole list. That's like for you, that's an icebreaker question, but that's like that's like a supremely. I know that could question. go into like a, a three-hour yeah. conversation. Yeah, <laughs> I've considered yeah. like removing that one and like putting yeah. it just in like the core questions that like yeah. anyone who comes on, like I'm gonna ask them that. And I might actually do that now that you say that because like yeah. it's like the third time I think I've asked that, and it does get into just like I mean I'm thinking this could just keep going and going and going. This could be a whole episode. Yeah. So maybe yeah, th- that. this episode on the greatest threat to our nation. <laughs> Um, no, but that the reason it's such a good question and just connect it also to Francis Schaefer, which mm-hmm. I'll just say, cause we're probably not going to talk too much about me and stuff, but like I was reading a ton of Francis Schaefer when I first started following Christ, just, I was reading tons of C.S. Lewis and Francis Schaefer, mm-hmm. you know, just, those were the books that someone said, Hey, read these. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, and Schaefer had always answered that question with, uh, kind of a combination of like materialism and but personal peace and affluence like the desire for personal peace and affluence and so i think that that's basically true but i i kind of want to boil it down and make it simple it's like self-love mm. and the kind of apathy that comes from that like the sort of personal peace comfort and desire like just to not be bothered to not help anyone just help yourself mm-hmm. uh it's just about you and you know, you know, protecting yourself, you don't care what other people do, mm-hmm. um, or you may care about what people do, but if it's at all difficult, you're not going to do anything. Or mm-hmm. if you're going to be laughed at, like people don't want to be laughed at. Um, so there's just like, I think an extreme apathy, because when you look at abortion, when you look at that, it's like this constant mass murder of the most innocent, mm-hmm. helpless, precious people on the planet. <clears throat> And you're like, how does this sort of thing go on 75 million times in the yeah. midst of 100 million professing Christians? Like, how, mm-hmm. how does that happen? It's not because 100 million professing Christians don't believe they're human or don't believe mm-hmm. they're made in the image of God or don't believe they're neighbors. Like, they may believe that abortion is bad and all that, but all that murder happens because all of these Christians actually don't love their neighbors as themselves. They love themselves supremely. Yeah to the point where they don't even care about their neighbors. And I, so I think at the root of all these great evils and um, even just bad ideas, it's just this is like the apathy of good people, just the mm. apathy of people who know better. Like, yeah. oh, I know the truth, but I'm not, I'm not going to stand up and do anything about it because I might get hurt or mm-hmm. I might, I might get lose my job. I might lose my job. Mm-hmm. And, and it's gotten so bad that, you know, we all need to, do things that we're going to lose our jobs for. We all need to do things that we're going to get persecuted for. Yeah. Like there's no, there's no real persecution going on because there's not a lot of really salty, bright Christianity going on. Mm-hmm. So, well, but, and yeah, also, I think that's a threat. If, if someone's not willing to put themselves out there when they're, when the consequence is low. And when I say low, I mean low, like losing your job I would in the, in the grand scheme of things, that is a very low consequence when you take into consideration the 20th century. Yeah, and definitely. So if you're not willing to lose your job over something principled as that, then you're definitely not going to be willing to stand up when they're taking people off to the gulags. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you watch like these movies that kind of reenact that stuff, you know, and like, I can't think of a movie offhand, but, you know, sort of like a Schindler's List type movie mm-hmm. or something yeah. where, where there's like a character who, you know, is the Nazis show up and, mm-hmm. and they're just like immediately the Jews are over there. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, that was, that was really rough and tough. That was a tough time. Yeah. There were people doing the things that like we do, like passing out pamphlets. They were like going into college campuses and like tossing pamphlets off of stairwells and like trying to run away and they got their heads chopped off. Well, today you can go on any college campus and pass mm-hmm. out pamphlets and they may bully you or push you off or, you know, arrest you or yeah. you know d- detain you maybe the do all this you're stuff. gonna get is a vituperative attack from a blue-haired liberal <laughs> yeah you're gonna get punched by some fairy yeah. and you're gonna be you're gonna be like oh this is the perfect time to turn the other cheek because yeah. that's not gonna hurt either um but you know like it, i mean th- th- i mean i don't want to there can be things that happen to you but by and large the level of persecution that we face is is so light and i think that i think most people just don't want to be snickered at mm-hmm. or looked down looked down yeah. on, you know and that's that's all like they're not going to to stand up 
for anything. I mean, they right. won't stand up for innocent preborn human beings that are being butchered. They're not really going to stand up for anything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But uh, also with it, I would I would like to say that um, the the greatest theological answer to that question is God. God's the greatest threat to our nation because he probably looks down at our nation. And he's like, oh, I've wiped way worse, uh, way less worse nations off the face of this earth for doing mm-hmm. stuff that like, and you guys got all these Christians and all these churches and all these Bibles and you've seen all these things. And mm-hmm. my goodness, you are Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So I think God, the things that we do and the way that we don't correct them. Yeah. Biggest existential threat is judgment of God. Yeah. So. And that's a, it's a pretty big one. The, the mm-hmm. biggest one. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good icebreaker. Yeah. too. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably roll back into that later on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What books are you currently reading? Or oh, the man. last one you did read, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you're currently reading books. Yeah. I'm currently reading books. I actually read lots of history books. And so I, I read lots of uh, like history books at the same time. Like, okay. so I'm reading a ton of 19th century abolition of slavery type books, but I actually started a book the other day. I have it right here. Um, it's from the 19th century and it's by a guy named George, George Cheever. I just grabbed it cause I knew that was one of your questions. Okay. And, and, and this is this, I, I can't remember where this It's like, this guy was like one of the early abolitionists of chattel slavery. Uh, he was a pastor. Um, I believe this was like written in like 18. 18- 25 What's the title again uh, it's it's called punishment by death oh, a defense okay. of capital punishment and i picked this up because he has this really excellent um book just arguing for um like a, making a biblical case against the the form of slavery that was being practiced in america okay and he's got a book where he's talking about like biblical slavery and bad slavery and all this he and, it, and i was like oh this is really He's being very careful and exact with the scripture and where the scripture says some things that maybe we humans don't like, he just deals with it. He doesn't kind of skirt it under the rug. And mm-hmm. so when I had finished that book, I, you know, saw that, oh, he's got a book on capital punishment. So I just started reading it and about 30 pages in, it is definitely, I think, a stronger and better defense of capital punishment than you usually read Interesting. today. So. You know, I know that's kind of a, a can of worms. There's a lot of different thoughts on that, but yeah, 19th century, they were arguing about it then too. Yeah, not all the abolitionists were on board with him on this, so he was kind of being con- controversial. There are a lot of pacifist abolitionists, anti death death penalty cap. Yeah, so. well, I, I'm reading a uh, a book right now called uh, "The American Story" by Tim Barton, and uh, he in the chapter is talking about slavery. Something maybe I did know this, but I had forgotten it um, because I really wasn't that interested in history when I was in school, and and just more recently I've become more interested in it. Get older, you get more interested in history. Yeah, uh, (laughs) especially in like how it's written, and you know, it's because it's it's not it's obviously it's not fictional, but the way some of them are can be read like almost like a story, like a fictional story, but you know, it's it's nonfiction. But um, the talking about like the three fifths rule, and I thought what was fascinating is how. The slave states were the ones that wanted to argue for them to be for the slaves to be represented as a whole person, whereas yeah. the northern states it was the opposite. Oh, yeah. People invert that, and it's like they wanted the representation because then the slave states would have had more representation in votes. Than I know the they're like no no states. these are these are persons. These are, yeah, and we'll go buy more yeah. of them and have more. <laughs> yeah, have more. But then again, but they're not like yeah. really human, you know? Uh, yeah, no, that is like a good, there's like a ton of points like that and just anything like that. Cause to me, like I'm really fixated on making sure people understand that the North and the South were alike guilty mm-hmm. in, in thing. And there was a lot of apathy in the North and the South. And then there was like the few people who owned slaves. I mean, it was a lot, but it was compared to the people who didn't. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, like the North like gets to look like they're the good guys. When it's like a bunch of like all talk, do nothing, <laughs> we'll let slavery be abolished gradually and over time. Let's just make sure it's safe and mm-hmm. all this kind of stuff. Meanwhile, please keep sending the cotton because all the factories are here in the north, mm. you know. And so like all of the all of the big arguments that are going on between like abolitionist and anti-abolitionist, 
like abolitionists that are getting shot and thrown in the Mississippi River. These these they all happen in the north. Like people like think that it's like the north versus the south. No, it's like abolitionists in the north saying we should abolish this because God is going to judge our nation with like war or something. We better do this. They're doing that for 30 years saying that stuff. And it's it's actually anti-slavery moderates in the north telling the abolitionists to shut up and wow. stop making such a big deal out of it. Stop calling it sin. Stop calling it a crime mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And God, God, God's not going to judge us. God's okay with this. God ordained this. And so that big debate that goes on, um, everything from that detail about, you know, like the three fifths, but when you look at it, it's like, where are all the justices that are like upholding, you know, the, the fugitive slave law, where are they from? Well, they're from the North. Mm. They're appointed by Northerners, you know, it's, yeah. So, yeah, reading reading history to correct all of the, yeah, <laughs> and uh, you get lies from the right and the left. And oh, absolutely, history. yeah. That's why my uh, that six lies about the AR fifteen video. I do three lies from the left and then three lies from the right. And so, just the comment section is just a dumpster fire of both yeah. sides coming in. And then you have the people that are like, "This is so refreshing. Thank you so I much know. for calling out both sides." And it's like, yeah, yeah, because you know, because the people who are truly fighting know that the people that are the most dangerous where you're talking about like actually securing legit gun rights, the people who are most dangerous are the people who are the pro gun people that are like trying to compromise and get rid of, you know, get mm-hmm. rid of rights. And, and, and in the same thing in, in the abortion battle, it's, yeah, it's, it's not the pro choicers that are like, yeah, we should be able to murder babies even after they're born. I mean, they're crazy and they're demonic and they're evil. Their policies look evil to everyone. It's kind of the, crafty pro-life politician who's sitting there thinking, well, we can't abolish abortion because that's how I get elected. You know, mm. like mm-hmm. I get elected on being pro-life and I run against Democrats who are pro-choice. And if abortion is no longer on the ballot, I don't really have any other way of beating this guy. Yeah. You know, like in yeah. Oklahoma, like everyone's two a. And so, you know, you got to have something to distinguish yourself. And yeah, so those people are bad. More pernicious. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's all it's it's you know William Wallace whenever you know you knock that guy off his horse and it turns out to be your buddy <laughs> you know it's always your buddy that that's the one who hurts you the evil yeah. person not so bad what's uh one piece of advice you you give your younger self oh man can I just say I am still my younger self yeah what's one piece of advice you give yourself right now <laughs> I'm not young I'm old getting old anyway um <laughs> Yeah, when I looked at that one and I was like, man, I don't know if I know how to answer that. I have to answer that on the fly. I think my younger self uh, had a lot less maybe faith in like God was doing stuff and it, and I didn't have to mm. like I, th- I, I think myself now, I kind of don't stress like when I'm talking to somebody and they sort of like reject Christ or they reject my arguments or they reject me or whatever. I'm like, man, okay. You know, like Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to save you. I'm trying to help you. Um, but, but I don't feel like I failed because I think Mm -hmm. my current self thinks, well, God wants to save them and wants to help them and wants to do things for them. And they're rejecting God. Mm -hmm. Um, they're not necessarily rejecting me. Um, and it's not really because I'm not arguing right or well enough. It's that they're, you know, being obstinate. Um, my younger self, um, I think, and I mean, younger, like 10, 10, 15 years ago, my, my college self, I think was much more effective when I couldn't, uh, much, much more affected when I couldn't persuade someone or something. Mm, yeah. Like I couldn't convince someone of something. I kind of thought, man, I must not be arguing. Well, mm-hmm. my older self is a little more cynical and it's kind of like, well, no, I'm, I'm arguing fine. I'm telling them the truth that they know in their mm-hmm. heart is true. And they're rejecting it. So I don't, I don't stress myself out as much. I think I was, when I was young, I, I would stress myself yeah. out. When Sometimes people, people just don't have ears to hear. Yeah. It's just a true thing. And, and yeah. I think when you're younger, you, you don't know that mm-hmm. after, after many years of telling people truth that you know is true and you know that they know is true, but they reject, you get to where you're kind of, you know, I'm not losing sleep at night yeah. because God wants to save them or cares about them a lot more than I do. And I'm just, you know, yeah, bringing the message. 
there's a lot of wisdom in that, you know, putting it in God's hands and not, uh, yeah. obviously you want to care, but you know, you don't want to care to the yeah. point to where it hurts your ego. Yeah. Or, or where you, where you get like a, a lot of things because I mean, we haven't really talked about it, but you know, I go out and I talk to people on mm -hmm. college campuses and, and that sort of thing. Um, and a lot of the comments on our videos are kind of like, wow, you're being like really patient and you're like listening to this person and they're being really stupid or really mean and it doesn't seem to affect you. It's like, well, because I actually don't think they really dislike me all that much. Mm -hmm. I think they're just all that anger and all that hatred is on Christ. It's on the truth. And it doesn't, I don't know what I'd tell my younger self, but my younger self, it affected him. It doesn't affect me very much. Um, and I think it's just because maybe, maybe it's a faith thing. Yeah. I probably could tell the, 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 all the people that are like, wow, how do you do this? They're probably all younger selves. Mm -hmm. And if, if they just talk to people for 10 years and try to love people, they'll, they'll probably be a little more chill. Yeah. Well, let's get into it. So, oh, oh we're, now we're going to get into it. it. Okay. Um, mm. So you start, the company's called Abolitionists Rising, correct? Yes. Is it abolitionists? Like the plural? Yeah. It's okay. actually very important. Yeah. It's abolitionists because it's, it's, it's about, it's, it's a newer, I've been a part of other organizations, but abolitionists rising is the, is the current iteration. And it, the reason it's called abolitionists rising is because it is actually kind of like a bona fide fact that at this point in time in history, there is now an abolitionist movement that is rising, growing in number, strength, influence, um, it's still super, super small. Like, don't get me. I'm not saying, oh, we've arrived. We've nowhere near arrived. But when you go back, you know, 10 years, it's, mm -hmm. it's, I know every outlet, you know, 10 years ago, you know, I, I know all the people, you know, essentially that are calling themselves abolitionist, believe that abortion should be abolished, not regulated, that, mm -hmm. you know, we should be unashamed of the gospel and not secular minded, uh, like abolitionist tenets and principles. Yeah. I know them all. And it's like a small handful. Um, today, I don't like, I've been places where people like evangelize me with abolition. They're like, Hey, have you heard about abolition? And I'm just like, Oh yeah, I've heard about it. You know, I've been <laughs> one of those, where, you know, but it, it, it's a movement that's outgrown. It's sort of early phase. Okay. And the reason we didn't call it abolitionist rising, which a lot of people are like, well, why isn't it abolitionist rising? It's because I really wanted to make it about the movement. And so the organization is all about furthering the ideas and encouraging people to be a part of the movement in, in, a, in a way that will actually have, you know, an effect on the culture. Um, so, yes, we're an organization, but we're very we're not the abolitionist movement. You want to say there, there is an abolitionist movment gotcha. or an abolitionist organization within that movement. And we're just saying. This is here. Like, I think it's here. It's arrived. It's only a like matter that. of time. It's only a matter of time before so many pro-lifers who, who hear that there's differences become abolitionists. I mean, there will be those that who don't, but yeah, I like, it's kind of like the, a church versus the church. Right. Yeah. We're, we're just an abolitionist organization. I'm just an abolitionist, but you know, praise God, I'm not the only one. My, my 300 friends aren't the yeah. ones there's, there's a lot now. <laughs> So your, well, your, your, your audience may be like, well, I've never met one. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we're still small. Yeah. Well, so, uh, now they can't say that. Uh, yeah, so, you've met, you've met one and he told you there's many. Yeah. So let's, let's get into distinguishing the difference between pro-life and abolition. And cause I, I think colloquially, most people associate anyone against abortion as just being pro-life and, and right. even, even from like the moment you're against it to all the way to the extreme that they just consider that to be pro-life. And for me, right. Like. I have always considered myself to be pro-life and, yep. and I don't say that in like how some people say it, like, Oh, I consider myself to be pro-life, but it should be their choice. No, I'm saying it should yeah. not be a choice. Pro-life, but to... this <laughs> exception and this yeah. exception. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like actual... Abortion is murder. It should never be a choice to, yep. to it, in a murder in this human being. But when I say yep. said pro-life, I mean it in the sense that I think abortion should be illegal. And, but can you kind of parse the different, cause, cause there's, yeah. It's like we were talking about earlier, it's pernicious. Like some, some elements of pro-life are pernicious in that like they claim to be pro-life, but really yeah. what they're doing is undermining undermining yeah, the pro-life movement or what most people consider like maybe a purist yeah. pro-life movement. These devices reset your trigger after each shot so that you can dry fire just like you live fire. 
in semi-auto. Plus, the Blackbeard fires a laser out of the bore so that you can track your shots and work on height over bore offset for close engagements. And the Blackbeard X uses an accelerometer to track and analyze the motion of your gun on their Mantis X app. Even the United States Marine Corps saw the training value in the Blackbeard X and began to utilize these devices in basic training. So now Marine Corps marksmanship coaches can analyze recruit shooting performance using the Blackbeard in order to make them better shooters. So stop wasting time with traditional dry fire. Order yourself a Blackbeard or Blackbeard X today and start training to a higher standard. That's yeah, a lot and, of words. Maybe you can Yeah, no, that, no, those are those are good words. I like the word pernicious. Uh, like, there actually are some pro-lifers who are not pernicious, but they are inadvertently undermining the abolitionist movement. But like like, like lots of normal pro-life people, like they, they call themselves pro-life, they think they're pro-life, and they run into an abolitionist who says, I believe abortion is murder and should be criminalized as murder. It should be totally mm -hmm. abolished. There should be no exceptions. We should we should treat it just like murdering a toddler. You should 100%. treat it just like murdering anyone. Um, a lot of people are like, well, yeah, well, that, that's what I believe. I'm a pro-lifer. Well, the problem is, is that if you look at all the pro-life organizations, you look at the pro-life movement, like okay. the pro-life industry, they actually are and have been over the past 10 years um, unabashedly opposing bills put forward to abolish abortion. So hmm. bills have been put forward in, you know, Oklahoma, Texas, you know, just the, I think just 15 to 20 states have had bills where it's saying like abortion, like you go into the murder code and say that place in the murder code where it says you're not allowed to kill people unless a legal abortion, let's remove that part from the homicide code and just have abortion be abolished and uh, criminalized prosecuted like established justice for pre-born children so push, the same i'm, I'm yeah. sorry to, to do this real quick but let's push pause yeah. for me you just said that in the criminal code and i didn't know this that it says yeah. like murder is illegal and then they add like a little exception there that yeah, right that's... way it should tell people that like yeah abortion is they wouldn't have to put the exception yeah <laughs> yeah i mean because that's where you first put it back in the 50s or like you you had like so the so laws in the united states you know all these different states had all these different laws and they were dealing with like abortion as like unlawful and you can't mm -hmm. do it and where would you put that well it's in the murder statutes and so whenever you start changing things you're like well we have to modify that mm -hmm. and so you have to change it you have to flip it around and so you you end up getting um you know so and also you define murder like you define murder in your state code you know, what is murder? Well, it's the intentional destruction of a pre of a human mm -hmm. with malice of forethought. So like you intend, there's a human there. You intend, you, you choose, you, you're sane of sound mind and you terminate them. It's very simple. Yeah. But that's literally what you do with abortion. Like exactly. you, you, you know, not to be crass, you pee on a stick. It says you're pregnant. You don't want to be with child. It's telling you you're with child. Mm -hmm. So you make a choice, you're pro choice. You make a choice to no longer be with a child, to terminate that child. Mm -hmm. And you can call it terminating a pregnancy, but you're terminating that human. That's the way mm -hmm. you're ending that pregnancy. And they so also called it exterminating in the 20th century, just to make it sound more euphemistic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's just, let's just say exter like final solution. That'll make yeah, it better. Exactly. Um, so, so anyway, I, I derail you on that, but I'll yeah, no, no, it, focus in on that where some people, well, it's not – it's like the criminal code even has yeah. to carve out an exception because yeah. without that exception, it meets the definition of murder. Like words yeah. have meaning. And that and that is what abolition bills – so like in Oklahoma, the abolition – the bill that you just have to write and put forward is just to go into the murder code and remove this allowance for abortion. And, and once you do that, there's no – no abortion is no longer lawful and it becomes criminal like it was back in the – 50s or whenever they had that law mm -hmm. you know now you may you may need to beef up like different states have different laws mm -hmm. like it may be like you know some kind of like felony misdemeanor something and, and it needs to be homicide so mm -hmm. you, there are things that need to be changed but to get back to the big broad question so an abolitionist we actually unabashedly believe abortion is murder mm -hmm. which i think pro-lifers agree with but when we call it murder we say it should be treated like murder yeah and that's where all of a sudden there's a bunch, there's more differences, but this is the main difference that, that the hang up between like a pro-life industry group, like students for life of America or live action or, 
the national right to life or created equal, all these groups where, 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 the, where it starts to become um, a debate is that the abolitionist says it should be treated like murder. Well, how is murder treated? What are the laws in your state that protect you as a, you know, 35 year old? Like, what are they? Like laws someone, that, uh, it's illegal to assault someone. It's illegal yeah. to murder someone. <laughs> it's, yeah. You know, like in, in the state of Oklahoma, if someone murders me, they will, and, and they're caught and they're put on trial and they're found to be guilty. They can life in prison yeah. or even the chair. You there know? is a penalty. There's a penalty and you are punished for doing it. Yeah. Now, uh, whenever the abolitionist bill, you know, passed through committee in Louisiana and ended up on the floor, what happened whenever all of a sudden the pro-life movement's like, wait, what's going on? You have a bill to criminalize abortion, which means prosecute whoever is the principal agent. So oftentimes it's the mother, you know, if the mother is choosing abortion, she is guilty of the malice of forethought, intentional destruction. Mm -hmm. Now it could be the father, right? It could be the mother and the father together. It could be all this stuff, but who is the abortionist? Well, abortionists don't go out into the culture looking for babies to kill. They're brought those mm -hmm. babies to kill. Uh, pills don't take themselves. Mm -hmm. They don't. Or they don't come to your house and jump in your mouth. You get on a website and you you order them and you have to take them within the first twelve weeks. So the person who's actually doing the murder is the murderer, and they have to be tried as a murderer. Yeah. Now the pro life movement, after fifty years of fighting abortion and trying to be super PC and trying to be compassionate mm -hmm. and not look crazy and all, they they don't want to look all these things basically has built up this idea that women are victims of abortion. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a sense in which that's true in the same way that you could say a pedophile is a victim of pedophilia. Mm -hmm. um, but, but does that mean that we don't punish pedophiles? But so, so the pro-life movement builds up this second victim narrative and, yeah. and then to, to look compassionate before the culture, they say no mother should ever be punished by abortion abortion is already punishing her she's a victim like the let's go after the abortionist only go after the abortionist so they want to protect babies without establishing justice mm -hmm. so they want to like say we're trying to treat preborn human beings the same as postborn human beings but they're not you murder mm -hmm. a postborn human being you get punished like a, a mother who puts her kids in the in the car and drives the car into the mm -hmm. river is guilty of homicide mm -hmm. and she has to be tried you know did, mm -hmm. was this murder regardless and of she, what psychological effects that might cause on her right it's like, yeah it's it, yeah you may you may deal with this because you did this whenever you come to but we're still going to punish you for it yeah uh, something i just thought of when you were talking about uh the pill I, i've never thought of this before but currently if a woman's pregnant and let's say that her boyfriend husband doesn't want her to have a kid and gives her a pill, an abortion right. pill. Would he be charged with murder? Yep. Most of he, he's yeah. Because like a pretty good comparison. <laughs> yeah. So he's the one is intent because what yeah. it is, is it's yeah. all an illusion. What we have in this country is actually special murder rights from others. That's mm -hmm. what we have. That's what Roe v. Wade is. It's just saying we are going to find in the constitution in the rights of privacy special murder rights from others. Yeah. Like nobody is actually, so like in Oklahoma, I'm in Oklahoma. There are no freestanding abortion clinics. People abort their babies every day in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Like we still abort 5,000 babies a year. It's all by pills. So it's all by, um, people bought, ordering pills and then taking the pills. There's no abortionist involved. Someone mm -hmm. would say, Oh, it's the manufacturer of the pills. It's kind of like, you know, you know, it's like it's like going after guns as though guns yeah, are the evil thing. Like going after the gun manufacturer or the car manufacturer yeah. when a car is yeah. using a DUI. It's it's the bad person doing the bad thing with the gun that you go after. It's the mm -hmm. person who's doing the act that is wicked. And um and that's and you, so so an abolitionist is going after the act of abortion. And so in the instance where the male or the father slips the pill and kills the baby, he's guilty of killing the baby. And why is the baby someone we'd protect? Because she wanted it. Mm -hmm. So it's like the whole the whole illusion falls to pieces. We don't we don't believe humans have rights. We believe wanted humans have rights. Yeah. It's, 
you know, like if, if you're wanted, if your mom wants you specifically, you have value and dignity and you should have the right to life. If your mom wants you and there's a problem with you, you should have surgery done on you while you're in the womb. If your mom wants you and you're going to be born or, you know, born early, you, you should be given care. Yeah. Um, but if your mom doesn't, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like someone can take, you know, tons of meth and it kills their baby and they're in trouble. But if that same person who was going to take, wanted to take meth said, well, before I take this meth, I'm going to go get an abortion. They're not in trouble. It's just, there's just a t- total insanity about it. But to get back to the difference between the pro-lifers and abolitionist, when that bill got put forward in Louisiana and was going to come up to, to be debated and voted on all of the folks that passed it through committee committee with a hearty yes, amen, let's, you know, abolish abortion got letters from the pro-life movement. 72 of the leading pro-life organizations, the biggest, most funded, most connected, the, the pro-life movement that does the March for Life, the pro-life movement that makes all these, you know, baby feet and does all this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, th- those groups got together, wrote a letter saying, we do not, as a movement, and we speak for tens of millions of pro-life Americans, believe that women should ever be punished. And I'm like, well, I don't believe women should be punished. I believe whoever is guilty of murder mm-hmm should be punished. And if we make that our law and we say, this is the law, the whole concern about, well, maybe women don't know. Like the pro-life movement has this thing where it's like, Mm. women don't know what they're doing. Like they don't know where babies come from. And whenever they're choosing abortion, um, they may call themselves pro-choice and they may shout their abortions and not regret their abortions and take abortion pills in the Supreme court. But they don't really know what this infantilizing of women that the pro-life movement does not normal pro-lifers like yourself, but like, those organizations Mm -hmm. because they're trying to like win a battle by being really clever Mm -hmm. and like worldly wise. And they don't want to look harsh. And so they look at us and they think we're being harsh when we're like abortion is murder should be treated like murder. And if you're guilty of it and you're found guilty, you should, and the law should say that and people should be punished whenever they break that law. Yeah. And they're like, well, that's so harsh. And you're like, well, no, you're the ones that are like telling them that they're not murderers. Mm. We're telling them they're murderers because we also tell them, and this is another big difference between pro-lifers and abolitionists, is we're always ready to tell them there's forgiveness in Christ right. for murderers, but not for people who are victims of abortion. Like, you're a victim of abortion. You're not laying that sin down at the cross. Mm-hmm. Um, so lots of differences. Like, that's like where the the big debate goes on. And, and so in every state, so like pro-life Oklahoma, majority in the Senate, like super majority in the House and the Senate, Republican pro-lifers. Wow. Republican governor, Republican lieutenant governor. Most of the sheriffs are Republicans. You know, this is a majority wise pro-life state. Well, we've been putting forward bills of abolition to abolish abortion as murder in Oklahoma since 2016. And if it were true that pro-lifers were really abolitionist, abortion would have been abolished, you know, 10 years ago, wow. you know, or coming up on 10 years ago. And so the idea, I think a lot of people, and I'm glad that you're doing shows like this and, you know, that it's, that is spreading, that abolitionism is rising. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just assume those guys who say I'm pro-life vote for me. Yeah. Every life is sacred are, are trying to abolish abortion. But if you give them super majorities and you actually have we, – we've always had – since 2016, we've had an abolitionist legislator who will file a bill and put it in. Well, the pro-life leader of the Senate says, do not let that bill leave the committee. We are not going to hear that bill. If that bill comes to the floor, we're, we're, gonna, we're not hearing it. And they will kill they – will, they will table the bill. They will vote against the bill. They've done everything to kill the bills. And that's not just Oklahoma. Oklahoma is the most pro-life state in the nation. Huh. Okay. Like, if if the pro-lifers in Oklahoma wanted to abolish abortion, they could by the end of the week. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. They have they have all the votes. Oh my and they gosh. have a governor who says— that makes it so much worse. Yeah, it's terrible. So Kevin Stitt is our governor. He says any piece of pro-life legend— he always says pro-life because he knows because he, mm. he ran against an abolitionist. Any piece of pro-life legislation that comes onto my desk, I will sign it. Behind the scenes, Greg Treat, pro tem of the Senate, don't you dare let that bill to abolish abortion as murder 
land on my desk. Because if that lands on his desk, he can't sign it because he's a pro-lifer and he doesn't want to punish the woman. That's very uh, Orwellian newspeak. Oh, yeah. Be defining, redefining what it means to be pro-life, to, you know, perniciously not pass what would fundamentally be an actual pro-life thing. Yeah. (laughs) Ban abortion, abolish abortion. I think they're pro, I think they are pro-life. They're just anti-justice. Okay. And so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a full-blown rejection of biblical justice. Yeah. It's too harsh. And we've, and we've spent so many, so, and the, and the truth of the matter is, is outside of the politics on this, like one in four women, you know, are going to have an abortion. Seek out them, or like statistically, not in every state, but like when you, when you, when you bring in California and New York, that, you know, you get stats like that. And so, so many people know someone who's had an abortion mm-hmm. or they've helped someone have abortion. Yeah, it's hard to or, think of that person as a murderer. Yeah. It's hard to think of that person as a murderer. And it's also like, you might be guilty of murder because mm-hmm. it's not just women. It's men, like men that are saying like, honey, we really can't do this right now. We're too poor. We do mm-hmm. land. Let's get it's like, you know, we already got two kids and a third one. My paycheck's just not going to cover it. Mm. And so they get the abortion. Well, that man is, he's guilty of murder. He's, they're, they're mm-hmm. practicing child sacrifice. They're killing a child yeah. so they can protect their yeah. born children. And of course their born children are more expensive. They should kill the born children if it really was about, um, they're just not yeah. allowed to kill the born children because mm-hmm. it's against the law. So and logically, logically speaking, you're absolutely right. It's it, logically and morally speaking. It's yeah. Kill be. your teenage daughter. Mm-hmm. See, someone's gonna someone's gonna clip that. She already had more life than this one, so you know. I mean, there you go. She's yeah. she's a uh... yeah. This this one's really the least expensive they're ever gonna be. Yeah, you know. And 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 for a while, they're the, they're the most obedient. I mean, yeah, they cry, they poop <laughs> on things, but they're they're not lying to you. I mean, <laughs> so so a lot of the I just think a lot of the differences between abolitionists we're like at the surface level, but. Um, this is how they play out. But I think the root difference is, um, and I know this um, from both 19th century abolitionists and abolitionists today, is sort of like kind of an unabashed willingness to sort of be biblical. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that sounds a little, you know, fundamental. It's like, no, it's like God gave us his word. He wrote all this stuff down. He says, when you deal with evil, deal with it this way. Don't mm-hmm. compromise with evil. When Pharaoh says, well, why don't I let you know, the men go for three days and come back or why don't I let the men go? And you can even take women, but not your children, or you can, you can all go, but not your animals. Like, you know, Moses is getting all these deals to get increments. And he's like, no, no favor. We're leaving. Let us Mm go. The Bible. And there's a lot of instances like that in the Bible where you're either talking about like national sins and removing evils, like prophets talking about like, you know, tearing down child sacrifice centers and altars and high mm-hmm. places or kings needing to to get rid of pagan practices. And, and the Bible like is very like you must do this totally without compromise. You don't leave a little sin around. You leave a little sin around to deal with it later. It'll always be there and always mm-hmm. grows back. So that's like for nations and communities. And then you get to the New Testament and, you know, Jesus is like, how can I be clear? If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. You mm-hmm. know, he's not wanting you to maim yourself, but he's telling you mm-hmm. the thing that's you've got to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. Adultery, flee. Right. Stop. Repent. Don't like cut down from, you know, once a week or, you know, to once a month. Don't just manage your adultery. <laughs> yeah. Just just, you know, just decrease incrementally your adultery until you're just taking long walks on the beach. Mm-hmm. And then when you get it down to just a, <laughs> just a, an emotional affair through the phone, then say, we've got to stop. No, you will all, you will Cold keep turkey. that sin going because if it's justified that one day of the month, it's probably justified. So if abortion is mm. justified for this person, for this reason, it's justified. And so like the argument against abortion is always like got this compromise and the, and you do this compromise or you sell out, you show partiality to human beings that, you know, look more human than human beings that are earlier embryonic stages or, you know, human beings that can feel pain or that have beating hearts, you know, you, you show partiality to one. And in that process, you're like breaking hundreds of biblical laws. Yeah. You're, 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 you're spitting on all the prophets who are like, no, you don't do a little, 
uh, evil to get good, or you don't call that, you know, evil good. You know, you, mm. you don't fight evil uh, or you don't fight good with evil. And, and so I think the abolitionist comes into this saying, God has told us how we're supposed to deal with evils. And yes, it doesn't really match our current culture. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason that the pro-life movement hasn't been able to get rid of abortion for 50 mm. years. It's because they've been fighting it with the worldly wisdom of man instead of the word of God. And guess what? Like what God said isn't just like true because he said it. It's also it works. Mm -hmm. Like if we would do what God says, we would establish justice. But we don't. We think, oh, that won't work. The culture won't go for it. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, because the culture doesn't really believe in God. Yep. And that's why they're killing their babies. Yep. So that's the thing. <laughs> like, so the pro-lifers will have this thing like, leave God out of it. Just try to save babies. Leave God out of it. Mm -hmm. Like, we need to be secular. I was like, okay, so why are these people killing their babies? Because they're not following God. Yeah. And without so, God, abortion, there's no issue. Yeah. There's no issue with like, murder. I, there's no issue with rape. We're just all bags of matter going about yep. in this massive bag of matter hurtling through space. None yep. of it making, matters. Making social contracts that can change with the next, you know, genocidal maniac. So exactly. It, yeah. So I think, I mean, you clearly understand all this and you're like a pro-lifer. The thing is, is, and so just to not be offensive to viewers who are still kind of like, well, yeah, but what I would just say you know, don't just listen to me, go and actually look mm -hmm. like or email pro-life leaders and say, so bill to abolish abortion as murder. Do you support it or not? Mm -hmm. And you'll either get crickets or you'll get, no, we don't think that that's right. And maybe abortion is killing. You're like, wait, what'd you just do there? Like, that's what we find. You, you ask the leaders, like the national right to life leaders, they're like, abortion isn't murder. Like that may be something you tolerate on some, somebody's sign. Mm-hmm. But don't call it murder in legislation. Because you call it murder in legislation, guess what that means? Criminal prosecution. Yeah. It's homicide. So yeah. and I, I do I do think that all bubbles up from um you know, I don't want to toot our horn too much, but I think the abolitionists, and we're not perfect, um, but the abolitionist is trying to be biblical in their mm -hmm. approach. Well, um, I like that I mean I or I I don't like that the phrase Christian fundamentalism now has a pejorative context. Like, yeah. that's a good thing. Like being fundamentally Christian fundamentally is bad. Christian is a good thing. Like, yeah. And the fact that now, even among some Christians, they think of it as like this pejorative thing. Like, oh, he's a fundamentalist. It's like, yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. Like, I've built my house on a strong foundation mm -hmm. of biblical Christianity. I've built my campaigns to fight evil in the world on a strong foundation. Well, you're being a fundamentalist. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. You know, but it is, yeah. it is a weird, it is like a weird thing where like sometimes you can't use things cause so much pejorative, you know, mm -hmm. it piles up. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think we should be afraid of any of those, any of those words. I, it, it, least of all, just, just being able to boldly say, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm following Christ. And when they say, oh, you're only doing this because you're a Christian, instead of backing down and being like, no, science, like science doesn't mm -hmm. tell you what's right and wrong. Science is just observe it, mm -hmm. observation, testing, hypothesis, all that kind of stuff. But like, no, I'm doing this because I follow Christ. And they say, well, that makes it invalid. I'm like, well, no, I think the reason you're doing what you're doing is because you don't follow Christ. So let's talk about Christ, shall we? Because mm -hmm. that's I think that is the so whole important thing. what you just said. Whenever, because that happens so often, I, I'm guilty of this too. Whenever they, it's like, well, let me let me come up with pro life arguments that you know are secular. It's like, yeah. well, good luck, and um, it's it's impossible. You're gonna need one. You're gonna need yeah. some kind of actual theological justification. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it 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 ends at some point. Like, is murder? Because they can't even say murdering born people like why is it wrong to murder born people right yeah exactly it's it's yeah it they're made they in the image of god it, they can't say it without that exactly yeah theological like it, it's not that they're alive like see pro-lifers have this fancy thing called um sled oh, oh yeah. i made you uh -huh. just you know what i'm talking about this sled thing like size size level. location yeah 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 develop something something e yeah. and then development yeah yeah, so all of that applies equally well to pigs. It doesn't get you like without <laughs> Yeah. No, I like humans that. 
humans are made in the image of God. Like you got to have that theological because the person is like, like, so, so it's like someone could show you a pig fetus at an early enough stage and be like, should you protect this person? And if you don't know embryology really well, you go, you go, you go, if it's a human, you should protect it. Why? Because humans are made in the image of God. Yeah. And if they say, oh, don't bring that theological stuff in here. And you're like, okay, well then let's just throw out all law. Mm -hmm. Because th we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are what? Created, equal, endowed by the creator with certain inalienable rights. Yeah. Their rights come from the creator, from the kind of thing you are. Why yeah. doesn't why doesn't the pig, which is a mammal that develops in the womb and goes through size level, like, mm -hmm. you know, the difference between a pig fetus and a born a pig and a pig fetus or pig embryo is just sled. Mm -hmm. well, so that being said, you can use scientific knowledge and understanding and arguments like that to tell the person that you're talking to that they're, that they're lying. You know, like if they're saying, if they're making some kind of argument that you need a scientific fact just to correct, like if you say life begins at conception, like if the person says, yes, human beings have rights and you go, okay, so if human beings have rights, when does a human beings begin? Like when is, when, when does a human mm -hmm. being come into being and they'll be like, well, not at conception. And you're like, okay, so what is it scientifically? And you can make that up scientifically. It is fully human. And no embryologist in the entire yeah. world worth anything. No <laughs> textbook, no teach. Like, that's where humans come. We are conceived. Mm -hmm. That's when we begin. That's the, it's just a synonym for begin, you know? Yeah. And so you, and if we you all find go. a scientist that says something contrary to that, all that will tell you is that that is not a scientist. Yeah. It's just some <laughs> political, it's someone who's like using his science to, to, you know, say crazy stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's like Neil deGrasse Tyson talking about gender stuff. <laughs> and you're like, no, you need to stick to stardust um, or, or whatever quasars. <laughs> like I, I just, I watched some of his stuff the oh, other day. No, I'm yeah. like, he, he uses his, the fact that he's this scientist who can use these big words and, and talk in a compelling way. Yeah. Um, you know, and he's got like that. Bill, you Nye. Know. Bill Nye has an yeah. undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering. Yeah, but he I, he I have it, and that's I think that's it. I don't think he got a master's. Or, like that's what I have, and like yeah, to so pretend to be this like amazing scientist. So let's you see are the it. science guy. You should start going by that. <laughs> well, it's because he taught all these kids whenever they like in school. He's like he's pernicious because Bill Nye is like I was teaching all these kids about like chemical reactions and uh -huh. ant farms and whatever stuff that he was doing. Yeah. And then when all those kids grow up and they're like tempted to sin and running off into darkness and all this kind of stuff, and they don't want to believe and follow God because they're worried that he's going to take their sin away from them and change them or whatever, mm -hmm. and they judge them. They look around and they're like, oh, it's that guy who taught me about the, you know, cell division. Yeah. What's he say? And lo and behold, he's wicked too. And he's profess, you know, professing to be wise, but he's a fool. And he tells you that, you know, there's no God. And you're just kind of like... Okay, well, and not to be mean to you and your your degree, but nothing about you know like he doesn't really have the authority, but he's yeah. using it. Yes, you know? absolutely. But yeah, the, it's the, the uh, was it the lab coat syndrome? Is that what it's yeah. called? Where someone they put on a lab coat or or they appeal to authority? Yeah. any of those type of facts. It's, it's it's yeah, it's it's a particular. It's starting to wane now. I think a lot of people are getting wise to that. That you know, mm -hmm. YouTube is you know in 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 the future history, they'll be like, how did all these Christians get? kind of smarter and bolder it's like where did where how did all this information spread so and then you know the poor owners of youtube will be like it's our fault yeah you know? like it's so much good information <laughs> is going out and it's and it's it's our arguments are true and founded mm -hmm. in truth and so they actually stand up mm -hmm. and uh the other side is just lying and trying to be real clever to justify themselves and it just all falls apart yeah yeah so no, i'm, I'm man, glad you uh we're able to elucidate that and, and like the difference between the pro-life and abolitionist movement. Cause I think a lot of people, me included kind of like, what is yeah. really the difference though? But now that yeah. you say it like that, I mean, that makes, that makes so much sense. Yeah. And, and, and I, and I would challenge you to look into it. Don't just believe me. I mean, like sometimes this goes like, you know, I sound like I have a tin foil in my hat, uh, you know, like a, you know, I'm yeah. kind of like saying yeah. crazy things. Like a lot of people converted to abolitionism back in Oklahoma because I was like, look, we have a bill to abolish abortion, treat it as murder, get rid of it. It's filed. 
And then like on Facebook, you know, this is back when Facebook was legit and relevant. Yeah. People watch stuff on Facebook. Uh, you know, I get on Facebook and I'm like, hey, everybody, guess what? Tomorrow, the Southern Baptist Convention in Oklahoma, they're going to they're gonna lobby against the bill to abolish abortion. And all these like pastors and stuff are like, okay, you're a lunatic. We're Southern Baptist. We're the most pro-life, you know, organization on the planet. What are you talking about? And I'm like, pay attention. Next day, Tulsa World wow. opinion, president of the Oklahoma Baptist General Convention coming out against the bill to abolish abortion. And all these people are like, what? So that, so like, this is a way this has to work. Someone has to say, pro-lifers believe this. Abolitionists believe this. These are different. This isn't just tribal. We aren't just, mm -hmm. you know, trying to create a cool name for ourselves. It really is a debate. And then pay attention to what happens and, and you'll see, wow, these pro-lifers are putting forward bills to like, like how, how does a pro-lifer deal with abortion pills? Mm -hmm. um, well, let's put forward a bill saying we need to stop letting abortion pills go in the mail because these abortion pills end up going into the water supply and they pollute the water supply and it's bad for the environment. So that's how we need to deal with the abortion mm -hmm. pills. And then meanwhile, there's a, there's a bill to abolish abortion because it's murder with malice of forethought. Both of these bills are filed in the state of Oklahoma. Guess which one gets heard? The water one. Yeah. The pill, like pills in the water. That's the story, you know, like, um, abortion you know, is bad because of environmentalism. What? <laughs> yeah. Because they think, because the geniuses that are over there running the polls are like, what do people care about today? Oh, mother earth. Let's fight abortion by saying it's bad for mother earth. It's not, you know, it's stupid, you know, or, wow. or the, or, or worse, they'll, they'll think, how can we reach people? People don't like the idea of pain. So let's file a bill to abolish abortion ban. They don't use a, a word cause that, you know, they know what it means, but Let's ban abortion at 20 weeks when the babies feel pain, because surely we can get everybody on board for that. And so you put forward a fetal pain bill to ban abortion at 20 weeks and it passes and you celebrate it and you're like, woohoo. And some insufferable abolitionist comes along and says, you do realize that 99% of all abortions happen before 20 weeks or 98. And that you do realize that that exception in your bill is like, no abortions after 20 weeks, except in the case of this, this, and mm -hmm. this account for that percentage mm -hmm. that are after 20 weeks and you've done nothing. And they're just mm -hmm. kind of like, well, every step counts. Mm -hmm. We want to like, you know, this is in Texas. We want to do more. We want, we want to do more than 20 weeks. So all the votes that you used to pass a bill at 20 weeks could have been used to pass a bill to abolish it. Mm. You had all the votes. If you go through every single one of those people who voted for the fetal pain 20 week ban, say that they wanted to do more. Mm. It's just, they just, it's just an addiction to compromise and a belief that, you know, compromise is going to work. Now I think biblically you can say compromise doesn't work. I think philosophically you can get there, but now for people who are totally pragmatist, mm -hmm. you can say, They've been compromising and passing incremental bills or regulatory mm -hmm. bills for 50 freaking years, yeah. 80 million murdered babies. Pragmatically speaking, why are you telling me to do what works mm -hmm. when you've got five decades of evidence that what you're doing doesn't work? Yeah. So a lot of this, I think a lot of this is it probably hits people pretty hard and they're like, oh, is this true? I don't know what to think about it. But go look, look at the record. Look at it. Pay attention. Next time some big pro-life approved politician gets mm -hmm. put on the spot about whether they believe that mothers who murder their children should be tried as murderers. Mm -hmm. And they won't. And if they won't do that, they can't abolish abortion. Yeah. Because that's the principal cause. Not just the mother, but whoever the principal agent is. If you If you say, we're trying to ban abortion, but... Like in Oklahoma, um, we have a have a no abortion in Oklahoma mm -hmm. ban, unless you're the mother taking the pill, which allows all the abortions. Could a mother in Oklahoma, and this is like a really weird hypothetical, but could a mother in Oklahoma, if she was an abortion doctor, conduct her own abortion, and would that be okay? Yeah, theoretically, because there's we have an immunity clause. The great most oh conservative. 
the most conservative pro-life Republican in the state of Oklahoma year after year for his entire term. He's he's term limit now. <laughs> Senator Nathan Dom. People love him. People don't like it that I say his name because they just they can't get up in his bill that he did pass a year or two back included immunity, blanket immunity for mothers. Like the abortionists are bad and they got to be stopped. Blanket immunity for mothers. So a so in a state like Oklahoma where abortion is banned, you could literally take up and these are not pills that just like they're not morning after pill. These are pills that you can murder a baby at 12 weeks. You know, a baby that looks, you know, sorry, this is a bad I drawing. Know they but, had pills that did that. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah. little, you know, you know, the paradigmatic ultrasound baby, you know, the yeah, one that yeah, looks yeah. the one yeah. you get the first the end of the first trimester pills that are powerful enough to murder up to 12 weeks. And if you kind of miss it, I come late in the mail. You can just take take double and go up to 14, 15 weeks. You could take those pills and you could walk into Governor Kevin Stitt's office and and say, you know, have them in your pocket and be like, Governor, you are the most pro-life governor in the United States of America, and you were given the Life Achievement Award, award, and Lila Rose called you the most pro-life and all this kind of stuff, and you've banned abortion in Oklahoma. And he'd be like, well, yes, I have. You know, thank you. Give me some roses and claps. And you could pull that pill out of your pocket, and you could pop it and murder that baby right in front of him. And according to his own laws and his own philosophy, he couldn't do a darn thing about it. And she could say, I'm doing this with malice aforethought. Wow. Not because the baby was conceived in rape, not because the baby has Down syndrome, because I don't want the baby. And it's the pro-lifer's laws that protect her. Now, if a man came by and said, "You do you want to take this? And she said no, and then he forced it in it. Yeah, he would have murdered that baby. So, so. correct me if I'm wrong, but there seems to be two... I guess sources that would call someone to be either pro-life, but I don't want to become an, abol- an abolitionist because I, I'm a, I'm afraid to call women or I have mm-hmm. some uh, resistance yeah. to call women murder. I don't want to look I don't want to look crazy or callous or whatever. There's that one, and then the other one could be maybe like a political strategic thing where it's like mm-hmm. those are kind of basically the two ways in which someone could be yeah. like okay. Yeah, because I think a lot of these guys are kind of like, oh, I'm with you, but that's political suicide. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's kind of like, well, I'm with you, but we can't do this. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, the reason you can't do it is because all of you are saying that you're with us, but you can't do it. <laughs> like, it's it, it, it's like it's all the it's all of the pro-life policy. I'm, I'm, when I say super majority, like the, all you do not need any of the Democrats. You don't need any of them to abolish abortion in Oklahoma. Gosh. It's a super majority. Um, The only thing keeping you from doing it is just choosing not to do it. And you say, well, why aren't you doing this? Well, because it's not feasible. It is feasible. Stop lying. Some of them you will push. And then they like I've pushed. um, We have a video up. I don't know what it's called, but we have a video up. It's from like a month ago. Um, I'm talking to a pro-life legislator in his office. And, uh, you know, I push him a little bit. And, you know, he's like, well, you know, what if it was your daughter? So this is like a pro-life guy who's pro-life and accepting roses on a pro-life day where they bring them roses. Yeah, yeah, you push them far enough. And I've had that happen to me multiple times where you go in, the guy's like, no, actually, I think I'm with you. I'm an abolitionist. And you're kind of like, okay, so here's a bill uh, to, like, it's already written. It's by an attorney. It's very sound. It's very solid. Constitutional lawyer wrote this um, to abolish abortion as murder. Since you're with me, you can file that and we will lobby people to support it. At that point, they're like, well, I had to read it first, you know, mm-hmm. and then and then, you know, you say, OK, yeah, you have to read it like here and show it to him or whatever. It changes the murder statute. Well, well, say you had a daughter. Right. And uh, and she get out of here. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. No. Yeah, I've heard that. Like crazy stuff. What? Like say you had a daughter and she was like with a black guy. What did you just say? And why wasn't I filming? <laughs> why wasn't I filming? Like, there's just like oh weird. God. I just, that's the most extreme thing I've ever heard. But like, there's a, there's a sense where I think some of these are fakers and some of them mm-hmm. are legit. 
and the and the fakers i think have an undue influence over the legit yeah. ones and the legit ones think oh we're all pro life and that's why it's so important to create this third category so like uh, like for for uh, so you have pro life you have pro choice and that's the only game in town mm-hmm. you know all of these vote pro life people there's just there's this gamut yeah. i mean just like this su- huge variety of, you you have to act, like the pro lifers that are like um not comp they have to say like pro life without compromise. Yeah. I'm a no exceptions pro lifer. Why do you have to say that? Because there's all these people that are like personally pro life. This is the greatest they would never do it. Pro life. Yeah. yeah. I mean freaking Joe Biden is pro life. Like that it like he would ne- he, he doesn't think it's good and he wouldn't do it and he's not for it because he's Catholic and whatever. He's not at the Peter Singer level, but Yeah. Yeah, he's he, he he's like he's I'm pro life. I'm pro life, but it's a woman's choice. You know, mm-hmm. it's just like this crazy. But there's like people, and that's you know B- Biden. That's all the way there. But like you can go the other direction, and it's like they're pro life without exception. They even think that you know we should protect babies mm-hmm. conceived in rape and all that kind of stuff. But then when you get to the criminalization part, um, all of a sudden they're Venn diagram. So here's the pro choicer, mm-hmm. and here's uh, here's the abolitionist, and here's the question of criminalization. Well, they're with the pro-choicer. Their Venn diagram, you know, we mm-hmm. both, the pro-lifer and the pro-choicer, agree that the mother should never be punished. That is the principal belief of the pro-choice movement, that the mother should be able to do this with impunity. Because the pro-choice movement would actually agree that if a man forces you to get a pill, the man should be in trouble. Because mm-hmm. they believe it's just mothers have this special murder right. And the pro-lifers, you know. I, I, you know, I, whenever the, whenever this post, I will find it and I will put the link underneath it Yeah. Um, of the, or you can just Google it. 72 pro-life organizations oppose bill of abolition. And you can read the national right to life letter. And it's got signatures from, you know, all of the big pro-life groups. Wow. It's got signatures from like the head of the Southern Baptist ethics and religious liberty. Like, so Yeah. So, I think I've, I think I've beat that horse to death. No, but well, let's beat it a little is, bit further. Uh, so yeah. on the topic of like incrementalism. So like yeah. the reason I, I was asking that a second ago was like, you know, obviously you have the ones that are like they on a fundamental level, they don't want to claim that either they have been or someone else that, that they know is a murderer or has yeah. murdered. And yeah. then the other side, they're not the, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And the other side, like the real politic type, you know, let's let's do this thing in a way that's like, um, yeah political capital and all that stuff. But yeah. is there ever an instance that you can think of? And I, and I go back to like, maybe like the, the declaration of independence where I think, I think it was and you have your pedigree is a, a mine pales in comparison to yours on the history level. But like um, yeah. when it comes to the declaration of independence, I think it was Jefferson who staunchly wanted to include in there to uh, uh, basically say that slavery was bad. And then yeah. you had like two holdout states, I think South Carolina and Georgia, that would not, the yeah. delegates would not sign, but they needed unanimous signatures in order to pass. Yeah, I mean, th- there's so, a lot of that, a lot of that. Constitutional convention is kind of like the only way we're getting this passed is if we yeah. leave slavery alone. So, like, literally, people don't believe, pe- a lot of people like the worst of the Constitution as though it's this infallible document. Right. Yeah. But slavery is defended in the United States constitution as originally ratified in three very clear places. They just didn't use the word slavery. Mm, mm -hmm. Um, And so they were very clear and clever. And and in one of the places they're talking about when the slave trade will be abolished, they set a date and that's in the, you know, Mm -hmm. there were people that were like, Hey, the United States of America, we should actually recognize Jesus Christ as King in the constitution and make sure that slavery is abolished. Mm -hmm. You're not invited to the convention, you know, like, um, you're a fundamentalist. (laughs) Yeah. You're a fundamentalist. This is not a Christian nation. Like, you know, um, and so there's a, there's a lot there. And I can, if you're, if you're heading to the question of, um, okay, so to get the United States of America, which is a great experiment and is, you know, I would say, yes, it's the greatest nation in the world and all that, like to get there, they had to have this little compromise at the beginning. Well, the real question is, is did you? If you're interested in new innovative training tools, then you have to check out Ace VR. And make sure to use promo code DEFENDERS to get one month free. 
I'll admit that when I first heard about this device, I thought it was probably a gimmick and there was no way it would feel realistic. But the moment I put on the headset and held the controller, it was obvious to me that we had stepped into a new era of firearms training. Not only does the virtual reality environment accurately represent the real world, but the pistol controller has the same weight and feel of a real gun. And the trigger feels just like an actual trigger. With Ace VR, you can play several different game modes from drills that work on the fundamentals of marksmanship to competitive stages and even more entertaining modes that work on situational awareness. You can also compete with friends and others in the Ace community. And don't forget to use promo code DEFENDERS to get one month free. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and, and, um, you say, well, we did. And you're like, yeah. Have there been any problems that followed from that? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, like, uh, you remember that thing called the civil freaking war? <laughs> when did the civil war start? Oh, 1850. No, it happened when they ratified the constitution, mm -hmm. when they compromised for those, you know, you know, rum and cotton, um, empire, people they comp they compromised there and that sin at the root grew and grew and grew to mm. the point where you had you know brothers killing each other yeah and so so i think the idea that sometimes you got to do a little compromise a little good is a faulty faulty idea i think that 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 you know that's one way to deal with that the other way is like just uh, looking at the question is incrementalism always bad that is like an important question because things happening incrementally like if they happen in the world incrementally like if incrementally more and more pro-lifers become abolitionist through education learning mm -hmm. thinking conviction and over time it goes like say here's the number of pro-lifers and here's the number of abolitionists mm -hmm. incrementally over time I guess that at this point is when you can abolish abortion because abolitionists outnumber pro-lifers and they mm -hmm. can't kill our bills anymore. We, we kill their bills and yeah. we pass our bills. Well, this happens incrementally. Well, this happens through putting forward bills, calling for the total immediate abolition of abortion. And in due time, it happens incrementally. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that incrementalism. That's not bad. No one should be, should oppose that. That's how the world. Yes. Sometimes there's, you know, big shifts, but if you look at the abolition of the slave trade, which was peaceful in Britain, it took 20 years of Wilberforce filing bills to abolish mm -hmm. the slave trade. Yep. And then after 20 years, they, they were able to pass it. Well, okay. Is that an argument for incrementalism? Well, let's go back and look at the bill. The first bill to abolish the slave trade was to abolish the slave trade. Right? They voted. They didn't vote for it. And what did they do instead? They voted for a bill to say slaves need more space. We're not going to abolish the slave trade. We need more space on the boats. So they passed the Dalbin Act instead of the Wilberforce Bill, like a regulation bill. So they regulated the trade instead of. So Wilberforce came back and filed the bill again. And instead of passing that bill, they passed some other bill. Eventually, when it started gaining a little ground and looking like a threat, files a bill to abolish the slave trade, politician comes along and says, I agree we should abolish the slave trade, but it must be done gradually. Hmm. And he sets a date. Well, time goes by, bill, 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 never voting for it. That date comes along. Do they abolish it? No. Some other compromise. We can't abolish it then because the French would have it. We wouldn't have it. So, so all the incrementalist bills were being used to delay the abolition bills. Hmm. But incrementally, more and more people became abolitionist. So by the time you have 1807, you have a majority of the people in parliament are for the abolition of the slave trade. And it's inevitable at that point because over time, incrementally, they converted to abolition. Gotcha. But the bill that's put forward that actually does it, it's not incremental. Mm. It's Britain will not be involved in the, in the transatlantic slave trade. Yeah henceforth and forevermore and so and it's the same thing in america even you add the war and all the chaos of that the you know the amendment isn't incremental mm -hmm. it's chattel slavery is abolished yeah you can no longer able to you know buy and sell people in the united states of america um and so um incrementalism if it's understood like substitute bills to do less than abolition are always put forward as the substitute it's like it's like, I don't know the law of the land or the lay of the land in, in, in every state in regard to like the Second Amendment, right? Mm -hmm. But in states where you have 
it's a little easier to kind of compromise with. I mean, I don't want to be offensive to you, but right. like, you know, trying to get some gun rights. You, when you compromise, it's not killing people. I mm-hmm. mean, it could be killing people, like in it, like through bad self defense things that happen mm-hmm. through it or whatever. You know, safer safer world, more people carrying, right? Um, good people, but like you might like compromise a little bit and, and get to where you're going or like you might move incrementally. But what about like in a state where you have a really solid bill, like a really good, you know, constitutional, you know, carry type bill or whatever the best version is. And someone comes along and says, well, why don't we pass this instead? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing that keeps the constitution, you know, mm-hmm. that, that sort of, yeah, I'm glad that sort of, that play is that's what increment that's one of the reason incrementalism is bad because of that substitute nature the other thing just from a christian perspective and i would say a logical perspective um because you have to make sure the things that you're doing don't refute themselves because they won't work Mm -hmm. like if you say something like abortion is wrong because it causes pain and that's the increment you get and then you're like, well, I'm going to be smash mouth and I'm going to go back and get another increment. You go back the next year and you're like, abortion is wrong because it stops a beating heart. They're like, wait a second. You said it was wrong because it's pain. Mm-hmm. Well, now you changed it. Yeah. So you're kind of like undermining yourself you're the whole time. The post. You're moving it around and, yeah. and you're not really saving anyone, but you're raising a lot of money and you're getting a lot of attaboys. Mm-hmm. But like that. So, so a lot of the incrementalism is just is smoke and mirrors. And, but some of the incrementalism stuff is easy if you're a Christian, just you can say like, we can't pass that. Like if it's a bill that, that tries to protect all babies, except for rape conceived babies, the reason you don't sort of support that bill, even though it's going to save all these lives, except for 1% that are, you know, conceived in rape. Mm -hmm. It's a bill saying that you're allowed to murder children for the crimes of their fathers. Mm -hmm. And guess who hates that bill the most? God. Mm -hmm. So why in the world would this bill that God hates that goes against his law that like literally like you just look at like, I mean, the prophets and the law, like Mm -hmm. Isaiah 10, Isaiah 10 too, for anyone who wants to look at that, like woe to those who write iniquitous decrees that make the fatherless pray. Like who's the fatherless, the children who are conceived in rape, like their dads put them here on the planet with no intention to love them or help Mm -hmm. them or anything. And the mom's supposed to, in our culture, just take the baby away to be destroyed. Yeah. Well, a bill that like does all this great thing, but has a line in it that says, except for in the case of rape, is a bill that says you can punish children to death for the crimes of rapists. And that bill is not going to help anyone. And lo and behold, guess what? You put that rape exception in there and anyone can get an abortion. They just got to say they've been raped. You say, well, let's make it where they have to report the rape. Okay, well, if it's okay to kill babies conceived in rape, it's probably okay to kill babies because you don't want them. Yep. Because humans don't have rights. Mm -hmm. Because everyone knows, like, whether you know it or not, everyone knows someone who's conceived in rape. Mm. And you can't kill them. Yep. But, you know, so I think sometimes... And then it goes back to that Lynchpin argument of, like, well, there's a difference between an unborn and a born. It's like, that that is... Then stop using these red herrings and start in... Let's argue that, right? And yeah. They always go back to that. Always go back to that every single time, whether it's oh, yeah. disabilities, rape, w- whatever the case may be. And yeah. No, yeah. you're 100%. Like, I mean, it, you talk to enough people, there's like, I don't know, five to 10 things that they all say. And they and, and they just move from one. You answer yeah. it. Like, I mean, if, you, if you're just like, well, I don't know. Like, it, I think you had a question on one of the emails yeah. or whatever. It's like, I think it'd be a good segue to that. Like, so what are is some, it, let's see. Are there any the strong common, ones? Yeah. Well, I think I have, so what are the most common pro, you know, pro abortion yeah. arguments? You know, what's, what's one that you've noticed that stunts a lot of, so whatever you want to go, go, how are you? Yeah. I mean, I, the, there are just all these common ones that everyone hears, you mm-hmm. know, what about the baby conceived in rape? And, and some people find that really hard to answer, but if you just think about it a little bit, like do you, you can always just say like, okay, so you, like I, said, I don't think we should punish children to death mm-hmm. for the sins of their parents, mm-hmm. but you do. That's kind of barbaric. And then all mm-hmm. of a sudden the person's like, well, you're barbaric. You're trying to like, <laughs> you're trying to make this 14 year old girl raise this baby. And I'm like, well, no, you're, 
you're trying to, instead of come around the girl and help her raise this baby and maybe help her put this baby up for adoption and protecting this baby, you're bloodthirsty for the baby. Mm -hmm. And I just always just flip it on him and say, let's kill the rapist. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, rapist can be tried and executed. I like, I, I, and, and no one ever comes up and says, what about, what about, abortion in the case like what about rape conception we should kill those rapists they never they don't nope. like you'll ask him you'll say hey who do you want to kill in this and they're always the baby they don't even think about the rapist it's very mm -hmm. weird because our culture's so hell-bent on you know destroying pre-born humans but that's anyway you're about to say something no well so that, i think and also most people on that even if they would concede that the rapist should be punished be it like capital punishment or something like that i think he that's not even what's going on in abortion. It's not the government that's killing the baby. So I think even if you went yeah. a step further and said, okay, well, you think the mom should be able to viscerate the murderer, at, not not while it's happening, but yeah. like, let's say a week, you know, a few weeks later, she should be able to you know, tie him down and then we're going to, you know, yeah. pull out his entrails. And uh, Because if it's okay to kill a baby that conceived in rape. Yeah. Because, and, and they always say this weird thing. They'll say, like, she has to look down and see her rapist's face. Oh, gosh, I'm, yeah. As though you can see your rapist's face in, in the baby face. Well, you know, there may be some resemblance, of course. You know, babies often look like their fathers or whatever. But, like, it's so cold and crazy to think a mother who looks down at a baby just sees the rapist and wants to mm -hmm. kill him. And so, but they always say that and say, like, okay, so why don't you wait to murder him then? Mm -hmm. Is it okay then? They oh, look no, down, because, because they see the born, baby's rape because they're born. Okay, then stop stop arguing that it was because of rape. Exactly. <laughs> because that born baby with the rapist's face, you know, it's, it's it, all of their arguments do that. Mm -hmm. They all, they all refute themselves at some level. They all, they all basically get really internally inconsistent or they, they're usually contradicted by something else they claim. Like, mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things that I do most often with any argument is just if like someone comes and they got all these arguments or whatever, which usually it's not, it's usually just middle fingers and bad <laughs> words and, you know, but uh, if they come and they're, and they've got some arguments or whatever, and they want to do the whole argument thing, I say like, before we do, before we go into this, do you fancy yourself as someone who believes in human rights? And they, it's, you know, they all say, yeah. Yeah. You, you fancy yourself and believe in that black lives matter? Yeah. Why do black lives matter? Like lives matter? Even black lives? You know, you know like in yeah. human. Okay. So, all right. So we've established that human life is valuable and should be protected. Okay. Now let's argue about whatever it is you're talking about. And then, and then, and then you'll say, when, when do you draw the line on abortion? And they, they draw it somewhere, you know, 20 mm -hmm. weeks or whatever. They draw it somewhere and it's like, okay, so what is it that makes them become human? Like, how do they become human? And what were they before? Were they some mm -hmm. other species? Like, whatever. And then, and then you're like, you don't believe in human rights. Just shut up. You're a liar. You're a hypocrite. Yep. You're a liar. I'm, not, I'm much more mean whenever I'm talking to a fellow believer about <laughs> these people. When I talk to them, I'll be like, you're a hypocrite liar. You yeah. Know? Not, not, I don't lead, lead with that, but. <laughs> But but getting them to sort of try to be consistent with the other things that they say, like it's really trendy to say love your neighbor, you know, mm -hmm. as though that's not Jesus. But like you know, even people who hate Jesus are like, you got to love your neighbor. It's like your preborn neighbor. No, let them go to the wall. You know, it's just like yeah, you, right. like like which neighbors, the ones that are downtrodden and oppressed and being abused and hurt and 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 just have to deal with so much persecution. Like, like the LGBTQ F plus a million, like those people, you got to love them. They're being oppressed. And you're like, you really think that gay people are confused. People are as oppressed as preborn human beings. And all of a sudden they don't care a lick about justice or oppression or anything. Mm -hmm. They care about that sin and that wickedness. And they want to parade it like Sodom. And uh, they're covering it up with this veneer of caring about justice and rights. The so yeah. Those social justice people don't care about justice at all. If they cared about justice, they'd be running around, you know, they'd be buying my gear and going on the streets <laughs> and fighting abortion. <laughs> Absolutely. So. No, yeah, it's it's um, the cognitive dissonance that they have with with just, yeah, we want to protect these people in these groups. Yeah. But not the person who's being dissolved or ripped apart inside yeah. of place that 
they they didn't choose to be there. I mean, oh, yeah. when, I mean, talk about abortion, or when you talk about rape too. Like the child is the least innocent party. Like this is going to sound extreme, but even the woman has some mm-hmm. responsibility in a lot of those situations. Be it she went in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exercise good situational awareness. Now, I'm not saying like they're like that's always the case, but like yeah, I mean the the lead the yeah the baby. I was gonna say science out of culpability. (laughs) Yeah, science and everything. Just like looking at facts and so on and so forth. What's going on? A lot of these rape conceived babies, uh, you know, sadly they're not. They're I mean, they are. They're like they're like date rape drugs Mm -hmm. of boyfriends who take advantage whenever she's drunk and stuff like that. And then oh, we conceived. We were too drunk. We didn't wear. Oh, I was raped. Mm-hmm. Let's kill the child. And, if and people don't think they don't even think about punishing. To redefine rape in this whole Me Too movement of like, well, you know, if you regret it the next day, like that's rape. Like, I think that was extremely strategic because, it, oh, I mean, yeah. it's obviously falls on its face to most people's logic. But nonetheless, a lot of people buy into it. And it's oh, like, yeah, you could you could say it on MSNBC and it'd be fine. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And so it's like, so, oh, well, she was raped because she regretted it the next day. So we should, we should, she should have an abortion. It's like, yeah, she didn't have her full faculties and her judgment. And you're like, well, why didn't she? OK, well, so does a drunk driver not have his full faculties when he kills a whole family and we should, you know, give him some grace? It's like, no. you got to take it into account, man. Let yeah. him let him go. Yeah. <laughs> the thinking about the whole like, yeah, you can't kill a yeah, you can't kill a newborn baby conceived in rape because you could potentially find out that your child was, you know, you mm-hmm. got raped at one point in time, but you also slept with your husband. Uh, say you're black and you got raped by a white guy, and mm-hmm. then the baby comes out and it's clearly white, and you're like, oh, I thought, I didn't think there was a conception it's there. Still attached, kill it. Yeah, it's like the baby comes out and you're like, ah, it's white. <laughs> so, um, how often, like? In your experiences and like when you go to college campuses or like street corners and stuff like that, or even in other settings, uh, how often have you seen people change their minds and what are the typical ways in which you, you notice that that happens? Obviously, I mean, person has to have a heart, I'm assuming, soft enough to change their mind. But yeah. then what's what's your experience with that? Yeah, well, on the question of abolition, any true um, like solid Christian believer that I talked that I end up talking to on, on a college campus and kind of, they're like, I'm pro-life. And I'm like, Oh, cool. Well then, Mm -hmm. uh, have you considered abolition? Generally, most of them like converting, like most of them, if they stop, they talk, they care enough to talk to the person who's like standing on the college campus with a sign and you start making the arguments if they stay around. Like, I feel like any solid Christian who is like trying to follow Christ, trying Mm -hmm. to be fundamentally rooted in the word of God, uh, is, is a goner for abolition. So I find that that's almost near, you know, batting a hundred. Now, that's, if you, if you, that's pretty inspiring to hear that. Yeah. Well, and, it, and it's, bec- and it's, that's why I think that's such an important thing because mm-hmm. it's not really like, I'm not an abolitionist because I've weighed the arguments and I found them to be wanting. And Mm -hmm. instead, I think the best way to fight abortion is the way we've been fighting it for the past 50 years, you know, like, um, it's very easy. So, so the way that generally keep an abolitionist or a pro-lifer from converting to abolition is telling them to not listen to those pro-life, telling the pro-lifers not to listen to those abolitionists, Yeah, you know, because just don't hear the arguments. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a, I think a lot of minds get changed, but most of the people that we talk to and that come up to us are not even pro-life. Um, so how often do, does someone who's like sort of pro-abortion change? Mm-hmm. That is that is very rare. It does happen. Um, what usually happens is you get someone who is probably pro-choice culturally. Like mm-hmm. they think they're in a college campus and that's the position they're supposed yeah. to hold. But they're they're not pro-choice because they've done it. You know, like they, they're not guilty of it. So they they can change, you know, like <laughs> they can go, oh, yeah, they don't have to be they don't have to say, oh, I'm a murderer. I need to repent. Let me place that at the foot of the cross. They don't have to do that. They they just go. Yeah. You know, I, so I've had a number of people kind of say, like, you know, I, I was pro choice. But now that you're saying it, you know, I don't think I am. You know, you get mm-hmm. that kind of man. You don't know how how far like they just didn't have a good arguments and. Maybe they leave and they and they 
they revert mm-hmm. back because they're, yeah. I don't think they're holding their position because of arguments. Mm-hmm. I think they're holding their positions because that's the desired position that they want to hold, that they think is the position they're supposed to hold, that their friends are holding, that the culture holds, that all the television shows support, you know, and, but that being said, a number of people have, like, I've talked to them, um, like in 2021 and then in 2022, they came, they come up and they're like, Hey man, yeah, I was, Mm -hmm. I was against you, but like, I have thought about it a lot and and I'm, I'm no longer, I'm, I'm with you. Like that's happened. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, I mean, that's really reassuring that like, especially the Christians are open to that and their, their hearts are softened to, you know, yep. realizing that, that it is murder and that it should be criminalized. Um, and also that, you know, you have situations where people, maybe you talked to them before mm-hmm. and you plant that seed, kind of like your buddy, you're talking about at the very beginning of the, the, the show where later on it comes back and that seed grows into yeah. something else. And so I think that should be very reassuring to people. That, yeah. Which interesting yeah, it's telling people to repent of bad ideas or bad actions or not following Christ and them hearing, don't compromise with this. And mm-hmm. then over time, sometimes incrementally, it, it's like planting a seed. Like, I mean, I think the Lord, used, like sometimes you plant a seed and it takes some time to grow. Mm-hmm. Now, there have been um, the one thing I did want to say for sure about like converting people or like causing people to change their minds. If you the most encouraging thing. And it blows my mind. I don't understand it. It's like not the world that I'm told exists out there. But if you go on our channel, like our YouTube channel yeah. and you like look at the videos and you read the comments, like just the shorts and stuff, yeah. like tons. Like, I mean, I used, I started like collecting them cause I was like, Ooh, these might be useful in like a PowerPoint sometime, you know, like a, yeah. we're having a different, we're making a difference. But I was like, I stopped doing it. There's so many, there's tons of people that are, they're not like the ones that I'm talking to on the streets or other abolitionists are talking to, but they're getting it in the algorithm and they're watching it. And I've just got, I mean, I, and when I say tons, I mean like 50, you know, screenshots of people saying, you know, this channel changed my view on abortion. Mm-hmm. Like I've got, you know, I've got a host of them that are sort of like, um, even great. They're like, they're like, I was, I started watching this channel. I went from pro-choice to pro-life. Now I'm an abolitionist and I'm a Christian. And you're just like, you know, praise God for YouTube. I mean, it's like YouTube can be, you know, like, I, <laughs> that's awesome. or whenever, or whenever you see those comments on TikTok, you're like, don't take TikTok away. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> but it's, it's, um, which we blew up on TikTok before we blew up on, on YouTube because TikTok was like, Oh, crazy Americans. Just let them, if it's popular. Yeah. Um, but, um, you see where I lean on that, but, yeah. um, <laughs> But anyway, there the comments on YouTube videos are are shocking. One, you can have a video that has like, you know, a thousand comments, and like nine hundred and fifty of them are positive, and you're like, that's not what I'm led to believe mm-hmm. is the is the state of the world. Yeah. Now I know the algorithm is pushing our stuff sure, to people yeah. that, but um. But yeah, you still see lots of disagreement. Well, and even but beyond abortion, lots of people changing. Like I noticed, as it relates to like you know the Trump Biden type thing. Like I've I've been on like MSNBC's mm. YouTube channel, and I'll go and like find some speech of Biden, nothing about Trump, mm-hmm. and and like yeah, just... it's ninety percent are just ripping it apart. And right. like this doesn't make sense. How yeah. did this person? Get that? Actually, yeah. We're not going to get into that. Starts to make, yeah, but it's but it starts making the conspiracies like seem because you're like mm. it's like when you like you see those like here's here's the Trump rally and here's the Biden rally. This guy won, and you're like the guy that's talking to the to the you know tree. Like what? It doesn't. What's make going sense. on here? But but no, it's, it I, doesn't make sense. But but that's great. That's that's awesome because you know I, I think. I don't know. Maybe I don't know the full definition of this term, but that the silent majority type thing. But it's kind of like, well, maybe I'll stop, need to stop being so freaking silent. <laughs> yes, and 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 I do think, man. You know, I'm not the biggest uh, since you since you dropped the T bomb. You know, I'm not the biggest Trump fan in the world, but <laughs> I, but like his way of be sort of like I think what people liked the most about him was that he was just sort of like blasting things and saying stuff that most people just yeah. think and want to say but yeah. don't say and they're like hey this guy just said some crazy stuff <laughs> got my vote 
Um, but I think that at, at that same time, so you have the Trump thing happen, and then you have all the COVID-19 stuff happen and like shutting down churches and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. And I think lots of people are going like, oh, oh, it's bad. Like, and then, and then on the heels of all this, you've got all this sort of like gender, not craziness. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's like, we don't know what a woman is. And so all of that is having this effect that there is a huge number of Christians that are just kind of like, yeah, no, we're not having any more of this. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, and, and also at the same time, you know, you get sort of better, better freedom with, you know, Twitter being acquired by, um, Elon Musk Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, I think that that sort of bubble of thinking like I'm a Christian and I need to keep my head down because um, everybody else isn't Christian and everybody else is going crazy and I don't want to challenge it because I'm going to be like, I think that has been shattered yeah. in, a, in, a, in a significant way. And so Christians are walking around. It's got a weird phenomenon where this the, um, it's the regular Christian guy or gal that's kind of like, I'm going to tell it like it is. Mm-hmm. But like maybe a lot of pastors – that are older, aren't like that yet. Mm -hmm. So, so you have, you know, have all these Christians that are getting on YouTube and watching, um, you know, non-Christians like, uh, like Shapiro Mm -hmm. and Peterson and, uh, Rogan, like, like, why are they watching Joe Rogan? He's not particularly Christian, (laughs) you know? Uh, but it's because he's telling truth about things or entertaining ideas that just get shut down. And he's like, no, let's talk about these. Let's not just laugh at them as Mm -hmm. though they're irrational. It's irrational just to censor things. And so I think that I think something significant has happened in the in the last five years that, you know, we won't fully understand. But a lot of people are getting it now. Mm-hmm. And and in my own little world, in the abolitionist world, my version of that was looking at our comments and being like, This that this doesn't make sense. Like I'm literally a middle aged white male like balding, like on a college campus with a sign that says abortion is murder. Forgiveness can be found in Christ alone. Like, and it's got 9 million likes or whatever. Mm-hmm. You're just like, this doesn't make sense. Like, what, how is this popular? Like when was the guy holding the anti-abortion sign on the college campus liked? Like when we, we were going and doing that in 2012, and it was like pariah. Yeah. Even on up to about 2016. It was it was still mm-hmm. kind of like, I don't think that's the right way to do it. And now it's kind of like YouTube, you know, send you your little, little whatever, those silly plaque yeah. things. You know, like, here, you reached 100,000. And you're just like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. There are 100,000 people who agree with us. And lo and behold, there are. Yeah, they need um, to speak up. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> they, then you have, not to rebuke, we, we, um, we all like the people who watch your videos, right? We don't want to, we don't want to push them yeah. too much, but they need to stop just watching and get yeah. doing it. It's like, man, if you, if you could get a hundred thousand people to go do the work of an abolitionist in whatever way, shape or form they're doing it, whether it's at an abortion clinic mm-hmm. or at the Capitol or on the streets or like just around their dinner table, world starts to change. Mm-hmm. And, and that number is, you know, growing hence abolitionist rising. But, um, but it still is. Most people, even though we're saying positive things, most people are still quiet. Yeah. Frightened. I, I was going to record a video but, today and I was going to entitle it Declaration of Truth. And basically the premise of the video is going to be just the encouraging people to sign a Declaration of Truth and not like a physical signature, not an online petition. Like every mm-hmm. opportunity you have, speak the truth and push back against oh, yeah. untruth. Like workplace, oh, school, yeah. university, family, like you know, gathering, whatever, every single opportunity, because the other side for the past, they do however many years they have no reservations about that. Oh yeah. And where can I lie? Yes. Yeah. And so what, you know, the, the silence, I'm not going to say silence is violence, but you know, the silence of Christians and conservatives, other reasonable people, whatever you want to say. Yeah. Has whenever someone says something and it's unchecked, then it's like, Oh, I must've said the correct thing because no one pushed back. And yeah. then it just, you, you, let that run out against 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And that reminds me of something that I, that I think, you know, I have to say, uh, I think it's profound and kind of convicting at the same time. It's, this is a rebuke for Christians. This is a rebuke 
of like our parents' generation and, uh, uh, you know, maybe even ours. But like the reason you can watch Abolitionist Rising videos, you can watch a hundred videos and you see a hundred dumb pro-life or pro-choice people walk into the conversation all smug like they're going to just destroy Mm -hmm. me with their argument. And then one little response and they're like, uh, you know, they don't know what to do. And I'm like, this other side thinks they're really smart and that their position is the intelligent, rational, scientific position. And it's the ludicrous, insane, self-refuting, non-scientific, philosophically, you know, defunct. Mm -hmm. Like it's the, it's just awful. And like, there's no reason or anything, but all those people, they think they're the smart ones. Mm -hmm. Now, They're delusion, they're delusional, but you know why they think they're so smart? Because they've been running around saying stupid things like my body, my choice. And for, you know, 30, 40 years, people go, oh, I don't know how to answer that. You're like, it's not your freaking body. If it was just your, are you aborting yourself or Mm -hmm. is there a body inside your body? Like no one was, no one was pushing back with just a simple fact. So these people actually have lived their lives thinking that they're saying smart stuff Mm -hmm. and they only think they're saying smart stuff because no one ever told them, you know, in a loving, kind way. You're wrong. (laughs) Hey, brainless, you know, like, (laughs) you, you know. Like they, they, and they are shocked. And, and sometimes like we have one, I don't know what it'd be called, but it's like, you can see them. Like we're out, we're actually putting our stuff up. We're about to leave. We're at the university of our, oh, the Ohio state university. We're about to leave. And we're putting up our stuff and, you know, like down across the way, like coming is this little troop of, of these two girls. And one's got a, you know, bullhorn and, and they've got like their beta male with them and they're going to come and they're going to, they're going to, Put me in my place. And so I'm just kind of like, well, you know, this will be interesting and run over there to talk to him. And, uh, you know, I'm not trying to toot my horn or anything, but like it's it's like you've got these undergrads that they're like freshmen or sophomore and they're going to come just put this anti-abortion zealot in his place. And I'm like, where do you guys want to go? Like. <laughs> What what part of the conversation are we gonna start at? And 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 by the end of this, you'll be like, oh, holy smokes! I bet you that guy has like a master's degree in the history of science, and an undergrad in philosophy, and has kept on reading after school. <laughs> We're dumb, you know. Like that's like, like that's not the brag, but it's like I watch these kids being like super confident that they're going to just, and they come out and they say crazy things, mm-hmm. and you're just like calm down just a minute. Do you believe in human rights? You know, mm-hmm. and then, and they're toast from the beginning. Cause they say the stu- they, sometimes you'll get someone smart. who's like, well, no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because they know where you're going and you're like, okay, so what, what I'm doing out here isn't wrong. And they're no, what you're doing is wrong. Why is that? Why is anything wrong? Yeah. And then they're like, I'm 21 years old and I've never thought about, <laughs> I guess nothing's wrong. <laughs> okay, so what's your what's your beef with me? You know, like you'll get some no people like that. Yeah, or yeah, you'll get. That's where you get someone, and they're so intellectually honest. They'll like, be arguing like hardcore, like eugenics, population control, weak go to the wall, like the, all this kind of stuff. That you're like, you're like sitting there, and you're like, man, this reminds me of that passage from Mein Kampf. And they're like, what? You know, well, I'm sorry, that's German. My struggle. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know that book where that guy wrote down all the stuff you're saying back in the day, you know, author of the final solution and leader of the third Reich yeah. he rhymes with Hitler starts with an H, you know? All, and they're I'll like, have a lot in common. <laughs> yeah. You're like, they're like, I'm not Hitler. And you're like, no, you are not Hitler, but everything you're saying lines up with Hitler against Christ, you know? And, and, and they can't, they can't even, fathom it but you will get sometimes some people i i got one guy and it was like is it wasn't recorded so it's like almost it didn't really happen but um you know conversation with the guy and he's kind of like yeah hitler kind of ruined it i'm like well excuse me it's like for eugenics like eugenics is good it was a really good thing but hitler kind of ruined it like i'm just like okay who do i who do i how do i call the how do I call the cops on this guy? You know, oh my but, gosh. because he was, he wanted, he, he didn't go into the conversation 
but he argued for all this like hardcore eugenic stuff. Wow. Um, you know, like racial cleansing of like down syndrome. Like, I think that's why he was saying something about like, yeah, we shouldn't kill down syndrome people, but if we could eradicate them from the population, they would stop breeding. And you're like, you idiot down syndrome. People aren't breeding all the down syndrome, like normal non down syndrome people, you know, what the, but you know, the country, I don't know if it was Switzerland. You might know this. Yeah, a lot of can. Yeah, where they yeah. like they said they fit or they um, eradicated uh, either with a Down syndrome yeah. or reduced it. And but it was like when you go and look, it's because they were aborting people. Yeah, they just abort anyone who has Down syndrome, easily detectable in the womb. Oh my gosh! And they're not eradicating Down syndrome; they're eradicating Down syndrome people. people. Yeah. Yeah, humans with Down syndrome. Yeah, because uh, um, I mean, all that can stem back to even like Darwinism. The moment we are no longer humans and we're animals that's like yeah. where all of this started to come from and it's like oh we're just mm -hmm. you know was it margaret sanger uh wasn't she a eugenicist as well oh yeah, yeah. hardcore yeah. big francis galton eugenicist type like i mean all these people are and they're unabashed and the guy who told me that like darwin or that he's like he's like there's like a good form of eugenics and hitler kind of ruined it oh my gosh um you know when he's saying that, I think he's actually saying something that is weirdly, uh, it's evil, but it's true. Like there are lots of people that think that mm -hmm. they would never say that, but that is, they're kind of like, they're like, man, yeah, I hate their run, you know, it's like get rid of these human weeds. It's not like a, it wasn't a, like Hitler was on the cover of time magazine printed in America because he was doing a great thing for his country, you know? And it's not like, when they were, they were practicing eugenics all the way to the point of the Auschwitz, Dachau type thing. Mm -hmm. But in America, go back that same time period, look in the history books, and you will see that we're having build better family fairs and like churches and stuff. And there's like eugenic stuff. And it's all about like, you know, perfecting the race and all this kind of stuff. And it's, and just, you know, Hitler just was like, well, if this is actually true, let's do something about it. Yeah. H.G. Wells is like, hey, can you back that up just a little bit? Because it's basically the foundation of all my science fiction yeah. books. We'll get but there. People we'll don't get know there, that. But you're going too far. <laughs> too, yeah. Too far, too fast. It's it's too obvious that you're that you're going after the Jews. <laughs> like, just don't. Hey, now your now your video is not even going on YouTube. I just, <laughs> my goodness. So this what, is um, what books would you recommend on this topic for people to read? Oh, see, I saw that question on your deal. There aren't a lot of books that are just purely on like abortion mm -hmm. and how to fight. There's, there, there are a couple of books that are by abolitionist. Um, and, uh, man, C.R. Cowley is the author of, um, a, a book on abolition that I believe is good. And, you know, the, the doctrine of Balaam, it has a really long subtitle. It sounds weird to remember the doctrine of Balaam. It's a great book. The problem, the problem is, is it's written before Roe v. Wade was overturned. Mm. There isn't like an abolitionist book on like how we approach this and fight this battle in the Dobbs era. Mm -hmm. So Roe v. Wade got repealed, but we still have abortion in every state. Mm -hmm. Like what changed? Mm -hmm. Well, nothing really changed instead of like, you know, saying no state has the right to, uh, um, criminalize abortion. Now they say states have the right to do whatever they want mm -hmm. with abortion, which is like saying states have the right to have slavery. Yeah, deprive human beings of the right mm -hmm. to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So Dobbs is, people say, well, praise God for Dobbs. And I'm like, oh, yeah, don't praise God for evil, bad things. It was just, a, you know, a scheme. But so there isn't a lot of like just purely fighting abortion books that I'm like, go read this. Because a lot of them have a bunch of that sort of, mm -hmm. you know, from hours ago in this video, when we were talking about the pro-life stuff, a lot of them yeah. have that stuff. Yeah. And, um, but I would say there are some books that, that may not be fully about abortion that I think are significant and helpful. You know, I read, there's a lot of like anti-slavery stuff that I think is really helpful. Mm -hmm. And, and some of it's real short. I think, I think there's, there's a book called immediate, not gradual abolition by Elizabeth Hyrick. And, you know, so it's a, you know, she was British, you know, 19th century, early 19th century. And she wrote, a treatise. It's a pamphlet. It's just like 40 pages, immediate, not gradual abolition. And she's making the case for why you should pursue immediate abolition and not gradual mm -hmm. abolition. And, uh, it's just, it's amazing. It's like one of these things you read and you're like, wow, this is, this nails it. Yeah. All you really have to do is take the word slavery and turn it into yep. abortion and it, and it, and it works. 
Um, and then there's No Compromise with Slavery by William Lloyd Garrison. Now, Garrison is kind of a controversial figure. He get a lot of, you know, he gets trashed on quite a bit unjustly, but um, very fiery figure in American history. But No Compromise with Slavery is just like a condensed 40, 40 page type pamphlet. It's more, it's kind of like a sermon. It's like mm-hmm. a, uh, like a speech. Um, and it is just, it's the principles of abolition in contrast with the principles of moderate anti-slavery, just sustained argument. Like it's, you think it's, it's, it's called no compromise with slavery. And you think it's an abolitionist fighting slaveholders, but it's just a sustained argument against the pro-life movement of, of his day. Oh, interesting. Um, okay. Very, very good work. And then modern books, um, since I mentioned Francis Schaeffer at the very beginning, I feel like people don't read enough Francis Schaeffer and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's little things here and there to quibble with him, but, um, Christian man, a Christian manifesto by Francis Schaeffer short book, but I think it's the kind of unabashed, like, yes, let's be Christian in the world and biblical and tell the truth because if we don't, people are going to die yeah. and our culture is going to be just awful and wicked. And these things must be declared in a biblical way. Mm-hmm. And so he, it's called the Christian manifesto. It sounds kind of, you know, it sounds kind of weird a bit, but it's a fantastic book and it's short and you can get, get to it. Awesome. Um, and then all these books, you should read all these. Books. Got it. Got it. Like, that's just a, that's just a picture. Zoom in. <laughs> yeah. That's just like one of those pictures of yeah. just book. Cutting. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. People say I should make an annotated. There's tons of great books, but it's probably, it's, it's really hard to say like, go read Holy Warriors by James mm-hmm. Burr Stewart. It's about the abolitionists and how hardcore Christian they were. But that author is a secular humanist who doesn't really understand them and is making fun of them the whole time. But it's factually true. There are a bunch of hardcore Bible believing Christians that were trying to follow Christ to abolish slavery. And I, and I think, you know, those history books if you can read a history book in the knowledge that a lot of the historian is kind of, you know, selecting which things get quoted and which mm-hmm. things don't, and you can kind of go to primary sources to see like, you know, okay, this is the quote that he used from that speech, mm-hmm. but what does the whole speech say? Mm-hmm. And and we live in a time of Google books and you can get so much. So, yeah. Do you believe that the needle is moving more towards abortion or abolition? In this country, I think among hardcore, like the kind of Christians that are like, nope, I'm going to be Christian. Mm-hmm. I don't care if it's not popular. I think the needle's moving to abolition significantly. Good. Now, there are lots of Christians who've never even heard about this. Mm-hmm. There are lots of people who are going to be watching your show that are going to be like, this is the first time they've heard about yeah. it. Yeah. And the needle will move for them. There'll be some who watch it and are like, that ah, guy was nuts. Mm-hmm. Don't ever have him on the show again. Mm-hmm. But like the needle will move because if they're, this sounds, a little bold, but if I believe so clearly that abolitionism is biblical, anyone who wants to have a biblical worldview who hears about it is going to go like, even if there's like, well, they still have questions. It's an inevitability mm-hmm. thing. Um, the guy that I mentioned er, way earlier, the pastor that wrote the op-ed opposing the bill of abolition, <clears throat> who was the president of the Baptist General Convention of Oklahoma, came out against abolition in favor of this namby-pamby pro-life health care regulation bill is now an abolitionist. And, uh, you know, so he, why? Because he took an abolition. He finally, instead of opposing something and understand, he took an abolition bill and a pro-life bill that had both been filed. And he put the Bible down on the desk between them and he laid them down and he said, I'm going to read this one and I'm going to read this one. And whichever one's biblical, I'm going to go with that one. Wow. And the pro-life bill, you know, fell to the side because it was filled with all this sort of, compromise that you just don't usually when they're just telling you like hey we're saving babies mm-hmm. they don't tell you about all this rubbish that's in that bill yeah um but yes the needle i think is moving among christians now in the culture it's hard to say mm-hmm. um you know i want to say you have this weird thing going on in the united states right now where republican leaders in the republican party are saying stop freaking out about abortion we're going to lose elections mm. And they say that because they poll and they believe the polls are telling them don't touch abortion if you want to win. And so they're saying things like if you want to win, don't touch criminalizing abortion with a 10 foot pole. And so Donald Trump will actually tweet against 
being too radically anti-abortion. Or whenever yeah. Alabama said, you know what? Preborn human beings that are in cryogenic incarceration <laughs> IVF, because of IVF, yeah. like they should be protected. And Donald Trump's like, mm -hmm. IVF's good. I saw that, yeah. Well, I think I think some of it is because they they do have some polls, but I don't think their polls are reaching every. I don't think mm -hmm. they're reaching a, a, a true sample. Um, I think they're polling people who've previously voted, and you know the kind of people that they're polling, um, the people who voted for them before, and all that kind of stuff. So they're getting a kind of they're not realizing that right now in our world, as controversial as opposing IVF is. No time in the history of the country has it been more okay to be like, oh, I think IVF should be totally done away. Like, I hate it. Mm -hmm. That's a perfectly legitimate thing that tons of people express without any fear or concern. You can go and you, you have, you know, you're going to have that awkward conversation with the people who have the IVF. Children. I'm not saying your children need to go away. I'm just saying that we need okay. to stop messing around with a process to produce children in our, in our likeness that also, you know, kills so many of them, you know? Yeah. And so like the willingness to talk about those things today is so much greater than even five years ago. Um, so that needle, but again, we're talking about those Christians. Um, I think in the, the pro abortion world, I am astounded by how many like atheists watch my videos and agree. And it, I like, I don't have the category. I'm like, well, you have no reason to agree, mm -hmm. but they're just kind of like, they, sometimes they're like, I know, but I think abortion is stupid and bad and mm -hmm. wicked and gross. And like, I think it's just morally reckless and irresponsible. And you're like, well, why does that matter? But Hey, I'm glad you're with us, you know? Yeah. But I, I am seeing a lot of that that doesn't seem to fit the expectations. So the needle is probably moving. That's good. I don't want to be too positive about it, but that's I'm awesome. I, I have a very positive outlook on things. I think that's good. That's good. <laughs> Man, this has been an awesome conversation. Seriously, yeah. this is way better than I thought it was going to be. Not to say that I was like, oh, this is going to suck. But I mean, it was, yeah. it was like, I was like, this is going to be awesome. And this has been way, way better than that. You're, you're, so, you're, you're like, you're like, oh, we'll have this guy. Because I, I, I looked around at your channel and I'm like, yeah, this is, if it it's, you know, it's going to be good. But, you know, but see, for all the, well, I'm just going to rat on myself for all the viewers that are like, yeah, but you didn't talk to this guy about the main thing we're here for. You know, I was kind of like, yeah, hey, let's don't go into that because I'm kind of an idiot. You know, like I, I'm not, you know, I'm a gun owner, but like I just, you know, I'm not I'm not as engaged as I probably should be. And it's and it's part of well, it, it is it, where I'm at. The thing is with guns, like I, I tell people, I'm not a gun channel. The guns yeah. are a means to an end. The, the right. defenders and disciples, you know, we're not just defenders yeah. of ourselves, defenders of our born children and our our wife or, or, or whatever, you know, our family yeah. were defenders of all people. And so you're just getting that, very consistent. Exactly. So across it's like, the know, board. Some people will come, you know, ask me about, you know, what about this gun? What about this gun? What about this gun? I'm like, dude, I I don't know. I Yeah. It Yeah. Like, no, I, that, I, have, I use a Glock and that is it. <laughs> like I don't get all these fancy guns, these two thousand dollar handguns. It's like Glock works and that's that's yeah. it. It's a means to an end. It's, yeah, I mean I have friends that like they, they treat it like baseball. Like they've it's like, you know, when I was a kid I had all these baseball cards and basketball cards yep. and comic books and all this kind of stuff and you know, like when people would come over I'd like show them all my cool like here's my Michael Jordan rookie card, yeah, you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, I have friends that are like that. And I'm like, that's cool, man. This is good. I, it's just way out of my tax bracket. Like I <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad you got 25 AR-15s. I can't afford one. Whenever, whenever the proverbial crap hits the fan, you sharing, you know. But, but you know, yeah. I mean, I think I think it's important, and especially whenever it's connected. Whenever it's not connected, like your channel, connecting it in a very coherent, strong, reasoned way is uh, it's it's out there a lot of people. But sometimes, whenever it's not connected, you're just kind of like, well, is this just sort of like a uh -huh. You know, you're just into it. Like, yeah, you know, it's like some, some channels about cars, some channels about playing guitar, yeah. some channels about gun, but you know, it's like the reason that guns are, you know, so important and like not having them taken away is because of all the things that it's connected to, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah. And if anyone's you know, watching and they think that uh, all of this is nonsense and they think that, you know, someone should have the right to kill someone because they're in a different state or location then feel feel free the unsubscribe button is somewhere in this location yeah, so feel free there. to go ahead and tap that yeah unsubscribe <laughs> now yeah 
this has been fantastic. This is a great conversation. Um, it's good. Where, real quick, where can people find you? And I mean, I'll link you guys below, but like, just kind of briefly go over that. Yeah. So we, so our website is just abolitionistsrising.com. And that's just, we lay out our views and stuff there and, you know, have a store and all that kind of stuff there. Um, and then our YouTube channel. I don't know what our, I mean, it's abolitionist rising. Just search abolitionist rising. Yeah. Should, Google's should pop pretty up. good at helping people find stuff. So yeah. just type that in. Just, that's the <laughs> name of the organization. <laughs> if you can't find it, I don't know how you're alive. And so, so just that's, that's how that is. But, um, yeah. And, you know, I'd encourage people to, you know, to remember the algorithm, you know, to know that that's the way these things work. You like, like, like somebody's watching this video and they've watched tons of your videos and they've never subscribed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Freaking subscribe. It's actually you most get... people that watch my videos have never yeah, subscribed. You, yeah. You look, <laughs> you look at, you look at it and you're like, wait a second, this video has got 9 million views and I've got, I don't have 9 yeah. million subscribers. What's wrong? <laughs> so, so I think it's important for people to, to, you know, websites are good. You can learn stuff, but go to YouTube channels, watch stuff. If you want to see me be nice, like you, if people are watching this video and like, man, that guy's just like brutally mean to all these pro-lifers <laughs> that I am one. He's defending me. You want to see me be nice, you got to watch me talk to lost people. Yeah. On the Abolitionist Rising channel. Definitely watch those videos, y'all, because it's it's amazing. And it's it'll yeah. it's it'll inspire you to do the same and also help Hopefully. you know how to respond to the very the common. I mean, and it's it's usually typically like four or five common arguments that get brought up and yeah. help strengthen our, the ways to respond to those our channel is going to die because it's just it's just it's the same <laughs> i i went out to a park and i was just kind of like, and i just said i wasn't going to be like so what do you think about abortion i was gonna be like hey do you know any good arguments for abortion <laughs> i'm like on nine years and i i haven't heard one yet do yeah. you have one you just know like, let's play a game i will give you the pro-abortion arguments i know and you give me one that i haven't brought up yet yeah and they're like <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> just like, yeah, no, there's just no, there's, they wouldn't even, they wouldn't know what I was doing if I did that. But yeah, no, yeah. it is all the same stuff over and over again. Yeah. Thankfully, like in the providence of God, you know, I thought that I was like, man, we're going to be like 50 videos deep. And people are like, well, I've seen how this guy answers that. Why would I w keep watching? But for whatever reason, you know, the most interesting, crazy people always they, it's like there's a magnet. They find me, and yeah, yeah, you know. So if you if you want to hear the same thing over and over again with just different looking <laughs> characters, but it, yeah, I, I, my my children, your children are not old enough to watch my channel. I would say that you know we're, our channel. My is oldest not. is. You're all okay. Yeah, yeah. We, she, we she get, can take we it in. The pro, we get into debates like so. I'll, like she was eating breakfast the other morning, and I came in there, and I said, a woman should have the ability to choose to abort her child. Let's go. And like I'll like be the Pro nice. and I'll have yeah. her debate me and just go and go and go kind of try to get her to you know strengthen those arguments. And another thing I'll tell people is like, I think it's important to be able to argue the other side as well as they can. Because I yeah. heard someone the other day mention, I know we're we're just now wrapping up, but let's let's, yeah. <laughs> let's wrap it up. Let's just jump back into it. <laughs> the, yeah. the other day, someone was talking about um, uh, IVF, and, and they were they mm -hmm. mentioned like IVF. I was like, okay, well, what about IVF? And they're like, well, do you think it's okay to play god I'm like well actually it's funny because you don't even under you don't even seem to understand the pro choice argument to be able to you to invoke ivf as an argument against a pro lifer it's because of all the embryos that are destroyed not about playing god like playing god yeah. could be considered open heart surgery like yeah or the <laughs> rhythm method you yeah know? like i just <laughs> yeah, yeah so that's it's funny to that's not the primary problem with it yeah but. Yeah. To hear when they don't even know their own argument or rebuttal. So it's like I try to get hurt and like to strengthen that and be like, be able yeah. to argue their position as well as they can and yeah. and steel man their argument. And then whenever you do debate someone, it'll be a walk in the park. Yeah. Yeah. No. So. And that's good. And I think, I mean, 11 year old is definitely fine and ready. Like my kids have grown up around this stuff all the time, you know, I mean. Uh, I, so I just think sometimes some someone came up to me like somewhere. I don't know where it was like some kind of church type and they're like um you have a youtube channel i was like yeah and they're like oh my daughter watches youtube all the time and like she comes walking up she's like four and i'm like well unless she's like really accustomed to hearing the f-bomb <laughs> probably shouldn't watch my channel and the lady was like, <gasps> I, was like I don't use the f-bomb but but it's it's there's a lot of that and you know we don't 
they don't pull it out you know yeah. it's it's bad for monetization and all that kind of stuff but we'd have some videos there was just too many beeps so well yeah. for for the people that obviously didn't see the beginning of the show russell has been up for like 30 i guess it's like 38 hours now but yeah we're, uh, we're i hit i hit my second win right before we started we're gonna so. we're gonna wrap this up yeah. but I, I think thank you again for coming on the show it's and great. uh maybe we can do this again i will have all the links below to your channel so people go check that out yeah and uh thank you for watching but until next time train to a higher standard